Jack program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go back to this morning and look in on Jack Benny at his home in Beverly Hills. Let's see. Maybe behind this chiffonier. I'll move it and look. <clears throat> nope, not here. Maybe behind the sofa. Gee, not here either. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? Are you sure you hid the Easter eggs in this room? <laughs> huh? Keep looking. You're getting warm. Warm, huh? Oh, I know where you hit them. I'll bet you put the eggs in my violin case. Your violin case? Yeah. I wouldn't touch that thing if I was full of penicillin. <laughs> Now, let's see. Oh, I know where they are. Rochester, hold this chair steady for me while I stand on it. Okay. Steady now. Yep. Yeah, here they are. Four eggs. Doggone, I never thought you'd find the ones I hid in the chandelier. <laughs> Rochester, I saw the lost weekend, too. <laughs> yeah, but Miss Milan got a better payoff than you did. I guess so. You know, Rochester, it was awfully nice of you to color and hide these eggs so I could have fun on Easter Sunday. What made you do it? Well, last year I didn't, and when you got up in the morning, you cried your little blue eyes out. <laughs> no, I did not. I never cry. Nothing could have upset me that much. <laughs> what are you laughing at? When Shirley Temple got married, you locked yourself in the room for three days. <laughs> Rochester. And when you finally came out, you tore up all your pictures of Margaret O'Brien. <laughs> oh, stop making up stories. Imagine me and Margaret O'Brien. She's young enough to be my daughter. So was Theta Barrow, but that didn't slow you down. <laughs> well, I've told you dozens of times that Theta and I were just good friends. Now, Rochester, I want you to take these four eggs and put them away from me. But, boss, I hid five of them all together. Five? Well, let's see. Maybe the other one is hidden behind the... I'll get it, Rochester. Maybe they're delivering my new car. Hello, Jack. Why, Mary, happy Easter. Come on in. Say, that's a good-looking Easter outfit you have on. And that hat. You really like the hat, Jack? Like it? Why, it looks beautiful on you. If you think it looks good on me, you should have seen it on Tom Brenneman. <laughs> Tom Brenneman? Oh, do you go to his program, Breakfast in Hollywood? Sure, I go all the time. I was even there the morning you won the orchid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gee, I'll never forget the look on the loser's face. Poor thing. She came all the way from Iowa. <laughs> but, Mary, all dressed up in your Easter outfit. Where have you been? Well, Jack, you know, on Easter Sunday, most of the movie stars walk down Wilshire Boulevard, and I went along to see the parade. Oh. You see any celebrities? Oh, sure. I saw lots of them. I saw Bing Crosby. Crosby, eh? Was Bing dressed up for Easter? Was he? I've never seen him so formal. He was wearing patent leather shoes, gray spats, striped pants, and a cutaway pajama top. <laughs> Who else did you see on the boulevard, Mary? Well, I saw Gary Cooper and his wife. Uh -huh. Mrs. Cooper was wearing a beautiful green dress with fox trim and gold accessories. She looked lovely. And what was Gary wearing? Brown shoes, tan slacks, and a light jacket. Oh, did he have a hat on? I couldn't tell. It was cloudy. <laughs> oh, oh. And I saw Shirley Temple. I knew... I'm not interested in her. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jack. I thought you'd forgiven her already. Now, let me think. Oh, yes, I saw Van Johnson. Van Johnson? Yes, and you know, Jack, I feel very sorry for the poor guy. Every step he took, he was followed by dozens of girls. They just kept trailing after him for miles. For miles? My goodness, you'd think those silly kids would get tired. Yeah. Jack, may I have a chair? My feet are killing me. <laughs> Here, Mary, you can sit in this armchair. Thanks. Ah, gee, it's good to sit in it. Hey, boss, Miss Livingston just found the other egg. <laughs> well, hurry, Rochester. Get her a towel. And... <laughs> Never mind the towel. Just bring a handful of corn. <laughs> you know, Mary, every Easter there's another... I'll get it, Rochester. That must be my new car. Phil! Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Livy. Long time no see. <laughs> Hello, Curly. Come on in. Say, Phil. Phil, we missed you in San Francisco. I know. Uh, I heard the program. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
What? You need me, Jackson. You need me. <laughs> Phil. Like Scotch needs soda, your program just don't fizz without the kid, Jackson. <laughs> Phil, I need you like a moose needs a hat rack. <laughs> Believe me. Anyway, you should have been up there with us, Phil. We had a wonderful time. San Francisco is such a swell town. You don't have to tell me about Frisco, Livy. I organized my first band there. You... You what, Phil? I started my first band up there. Mm, San Francisco sure gone through a lot. <laughs> Your band and the earthquake. <laughs> they can take it, can't they? Gee whiz, I'll never forget my first band, Jackson. It was just a little three-piece outfit, a saxophone, piano, and drums. And then we added Frankie, my guitar player. Say, Phil, how'd you happen to hire Frankie? Well, we didn't exactly hire him. You see, we was playing at a wedding, and they couldn't afford to pay us, so they gave us the groom. <laughs> The groom? What happened to the bride? Oh, she changed her name, started singing with some other band. I don't know. Really? What's her name now? Carmen Lombardo. (laughs) Bill, for your information, Carmen Lombardo is a man. Well, maybe it was Carmen Miranda. I don't remember girls' names. I don't fool with dames no more. What do I know about it? Can I get it, boss? No, I better answer the door. I'm expecting my new car. Hey, wait a minute, Jackson. I can't believe it. Did you buy a new car? No, he entered Bob Hope's jingle contest. (laughs) Yeah. Jack, you didn't send in that jingle you wrote. Certainly, and I think it ought to win. What was the jingle he wrote, Livy? My favorite brunette, and I love him still, is Honest Abe on a $5 bill. Well, I thought that was pretty good. Go ahead and answer it, Rochester. Okay. Boss, boss, it is your new car. It's a beautiful, light gray color. Uh oh, my mistake. It's Mr. Wilson in a new suit. <laughs> oh, well, steer him. I show him in, Rochester. Hello, Jack, Mary, Phil. Oh, hello, hello, Don. Hello, Don. A great kid. Gosh, Don, you sure look handsome in your Easter outfit. Yeah, Dante, where'd you buy that nifty looking suit? Oh, same place I get all my clothes at Hart Schaffner, Marks, and O'Reilly. <laughs> all right. Don't you mean just Hart Schaffner and Marks? <laughs> oh, when I buy a suit, they call in extra help. <laughs> that I can understand. The fellow who makes your pants was an engineer on Boulder Dam. <laughs> but, Don, we were just talking about being up in San Francisco. Did you have a good time up there? Oh, did I? You know, Jack, I love that town. They have the most wonderful restaurants and the best food in the world. They certainly have. I ate at John's Rendezvous, then I ate at the Tonga Room, then I ate at the Popagaya Room in the Fairmont, then I ate at Roberts and the Nugget, and then I ate at Omar Khayyam. Gee. And then on the second day, I ate at... What? <laughs> The next day, I was eating at the Mark Hopkins, and right in the middle of dinner, they ran out of food. The Mark Hopkins? No, San Francisco. Oh. Well, speaking of food, has made me hungry. Hey, let's go out in the kitchen, kids, and get some sandwich. What? Oh, you yeah. want to see yeah. that? Yeah, for sure. Now, Rochester. Rochester, those sandwiches were very good. They certainly were. Thanks. Mr. Wilson, would you like another bucket of coffee? He's had enough. Now, look, kid. Isn't anybody going to say hello to me? Oh, Dennis. Dennis, when did you come in? Oh, I've been here all the time. I was standing behind Mr. Wilson's right leg. (laughs) Oh. Well, say, kid, I I tried to reach you on the phone last night, but nobody answered. Where were you? Oh, my mother took me to the circus. Well, well, did you enjoy it? Yeah, and you should see those girls on the flying trapeze. They wore tights. (laughs) (laughs) Dennis, they always wear tights. Say, those trapeze acts are dangerous. Did any of them fall? No, I guess they were all buttoned up. (laughs) She didn't mean that. Oh. Hey, how is the circus this year, kid? Oh, it's swell. In one act, they shot a man out of the cannon, and he landed right in my mother's lap. My good, what did your mother do? She hung on to him and yelled, I have a man in the balcony, doctor! (laughs) Oh, boy. That is, wasn't your father there? He was the one who aimed the cannon at my mother. Stop. Aim the cannon at his mother. <laughs> anything. They say anything. Dennis, how'd you like the clowns? Oh, they were all right, I guess. What do you mean, you guess? The clowns are big stars. They're very funny. But how come they've only got one show? <laughs> Dennis, just because you and Phil have two shows doesn't mean that everybody has to have them. Let you me know. tell you something, Jackson. Hold it a minute. Not only have I got two shows, but while you were in San Francisco, I signed up to make a new picture. A new picture, Phil. What's the name of it? The Keg and I. 
Oh, Harris, you may not be Frederick March, but you're the best years of anybody's life. <laughs> now I've heard everything. Phil, Phil, let me tell you something. You were only... <laughs> Phil, you were only kidding about making a picture. I'd like to get a new cast sometime. <laughs> but it may, it may surprise you to know that right now there's a deal pending where I'm going to be starred in a picture for Samuel Goldwyn. Samuel Goldwyn? Yes. He makes great pictures, and he's the kind of a producer I want to be with. I'll bet Mr. Goldwyn has to work very hard to support his family. He's got 30 daughters. What? The Goldwyn girls. <laughs> They're not his daughters, then. But anyway, Don, if this deal we're making comes through, it'll really be sensational. You know, Mr. Goldwyn is begging me to consider his offer. Begging you? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, tell him what happened yesterday when you were out to his studio. Mary. Hey, what was it, Livy? Mary, if you open your mouth, I'll never tell you another <laughs> thing again. <laughs> Come on, Mary, tell us what happened when Jack went out to see Mr. Goldwyn. Well, about 2 oh. o'clock yesterday afternoon, Rochester drove Jack out to the studio. <laughs> There's the main gate, Rochester. I'll get off here. Uh, Rochester, you wait right here in the car for me. Boss, do you mind if I lean against that new Cadillac over there? It's good for my morale. <laughs> no, no, as long as you wait here. Gee, what a high-class studio. Hmm. Look at the way they got Frederick Marches picture plastered all over. I beg your pardon, sir. Huh? You can't go through this gate without a pass. A pass? Well, perhaps you don't recognize me. If you knew who you were talking to, you'd let me go right in. Oh, no, I wouldn't, Mr. Benny. <laughs> oh, well, maybe I have a pass in my wallet. I'll take a look. Well? Wait till I open it. There. First time this year, Mr. Benny? <laughs> no, no, no. Now, let's see. Here's a pass for Warner Brothers. Here's one for Universal International. Here's one for Biograph. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here's something I don't need anymore. See, my draft card. You know, you can tear them up now, you know. You could have torn that one up in 1918. <laughs> you don't have to be so... Oh, wait a minute. Here it is. Gate pass to Samuel Goldwyn Studios. Now, Mr. Goldwyn's office is right through that door. You go right down the hall and turn to the left. Thank you. da da dee da dum da dee da da dum da dum da dee da da dum Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. Benny. Dum dum dee da dee dee bum bum bum. Hello, hello, Mr. Benny. Dum dee da dee da dum dum dee. Oh, hello, hello, Mr. Benny. See those golden girls are beautiful. <laughs> Let's see. Gee, won't Mr. Goldwyn be surprised to see me? I hope he's... Oh, this must be his office here. I, I beg your pardon, miss, but is, is this Mr. Goldwyn's office? Yes, sir. Well, will you tell him that Mr. Benny is here to see him? One moment, please. Mr. Goldwyn, uh, Mr. Benny is here to see you. I'll find out. What is it you wish to see Mr. Goldwyn about? Uh, a picture. He wishes to see you about a picture. Yes, sir. He told me to give you one out of the top drawer. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you misunderstood. You see, I want to talk about... I want to talk to him about making a picture. You see, a movie. Oh, oh just a moment. Yeah. Mr. Goldwyn, Mr. Benny wants to talk to you about making a picture. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Goldwyn is busy right now. Would you care to wait? Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Goldwyn. 
Well, Hoagie. Hoagie Carmichael. Hello, Jack. Gosh, Hoagie, here, here I am waiting to go into the office and you came out. Uh, I didn't know you were in there. I've been in that Goldman's office since 10 o'clock this morning. Since 10 o'clock this morning, eh? What were you doing in there all the time? I was just trying to convince him that my name is Hoagie and not Hugo. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. It happened at the Academy Awards ceremonies when Mr. Goldwyn accidentally called you Hugo instead of Hoagie, but it was just a slight mistake. A slight mistake? Jack, for 25 years, I built up the name of Hoagie. Hoagie Carmichael. And it wasn't easy. I remember when I first started writing songs, I used to sit up nights, no food, hardly enough money to pay the rent. I was ready to quit, but my wife encouraged me. She said, Hoagie, you can do it. My mother encouraged me. She said, Hoagie, don't give up. My friends encouraged me, Hoagie, stick to it. And they were right. I can remember those great songs. Stardust by Hoagie Carmichael. Lazy Bones by Hoagie Carmichael. Old Buttermilk Sky by Hoagie Carmichael. They were all great, Hoagie. And who gets all the credit? Some no-talent jerk named Hugo. <laughs> Well, Hoagie, Hoagie, maybe I can help you. Oh, I wish you would, Jack. All I am now is an unknown character with a million dollars. Whoops. <laughs> Did you say something, Jack? No, no, it's just that when I hear figures like that, something <laughs> happens. Something happens in my stomach. You know? Oh, you mean just because I said a million dollars? Whoops. <laughs> I, I did it again. But getting back to you, Hoagie, don't worry. Hoagie, okay, I'll clear up your name for you. I've got a big listening audience, and if you want to come on my program and do one of your songs, I'll let everybody know it was written by Hoagie Carmichael, not Hugo. Uh, guys, if you do that, I'd be very grateful. So long, Jack. So long. Gee, that was nice of Hoagie to... Well, what do you know? He signed it Hugo Carmichael. <laughs> He really is confused, you know. Mr. Goldwyn is waiting. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Thank you. Mr. Goldwyn? Thank you. Mr. Goldwyn? Hmm? Come right in. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Goldwyn, I hope you don't mind my breaking in without, without an appointment. No, no. It's always nice to see you. Sit down, Bob. <laughs> No, no, no. See, my name is Jack, Jack Benny. Oh, yes. Well, Jack, what can I do for you? Mr. Gowen, I've come here to give you the greatest opportunity of your life. Opportunity? <laughs> yes. When I tell you what I've got in my mind, it'll make you the greatest producer in the motion picture industry. This is an opportunity that comes only once... Pardon me. Hello. Hello, Fame Home Magazine? Yes, I produce the best years of our lives. Yes, that picture won nine awards for the best picture, for direction, for editing, for musical score, for story, for best actor, for best supporting actor, a special award for Harold Russell, and also the Tolbert Award. That's right. Thank you very much. Now, Jack, what was this opportunity you were going to give me? <laughs> Well, let me, let's put it this way. Mr. Gowen, your studio won many Academy Awards this year, and I thought maybe you'd like to win them again next year. I certainly would. What is your suggestion? Well, have you ever thought of making a picture starring Jack Benny? <laughs> no. Let me help you up, Mr. Gowen. <laughs> No, let me rest here a while. <laughs> oh, oh. What we... <laughs> now, what were you saying, Jack? Well, what I was getting at... Pardon me, Mr. Goldwyn. Excuse me, Jack. 
What is it, Pat? Oh, Mr. Goldwyn, two blueprints have been submitted for the set on stage eight, the reproduction of the George Washington Bridge overlooking New York Harbor. Yes. Now, on both sets, the harbor is always in evidence. However, set number one with just the harbor can be constructed for only a million dollars. Whoops! <laughs> Did you... <laughs> Did you say something, Jack? No, no. 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 <laughs> so not a thing. On the other hand, in set number two, we can build the harbor, the bridge, and the skyline for an extra million. Whoop. So you see, it's entirely up to you, Mr. Goldwyn, whether you want to spend one million... Whoops. ...or two million. Whoops, whoops. What's the matter with you, Jack? Huh? You sound like a tugboat. <laughs> I'm sorry, huh? Pat, I'll take number two. Uh, yes, Mr. Golan. Now, what were you what were you talking about? Mr. Jack? Golan, I'm not going to beat around the bush. If you make a picture with me, I'm sure we'll win the Academy Award next year. I've got hidden talents. <laughs> <laughs> That's snoozy. <laughs> no, really, I've got hidden talents. Maybe so. <laughs> I haven't the time to play hide-and-seek. <laughs> but, Mr. Goldwood... Now, look, Jack, I'm a busy man. I know you are, Mr. Goldwood, but it, it isn't as though I'm pleading for a job. I've made lots of pictures. Call up Warner Brothers. They'll be very happy to recommend me to you. They'll be happy to recommend me to anybody. <laughs> I mean, look, look, Mr. Goldwood, if you'd only think it over, I promise Pardon you... Pardon me, Mr. Goldwyn. What is it now, Pat? Uh, we got to do something about the picture we're shooting on stage five. The script we have now is a little dated. The hero was a bombardier on a B-29. You're right. We should change it to something post-war, something civilian. Well, why don't you make him a tail gunner on a Studebaker? <laughs> uh, let me help you up, Pat. <laughs> He's a comedian. We'll talk about it later. Hmm. Tail gunner on a studio maker. Well, I, I thought it was very funny, didn't it? Maybe so, Jack. In fact, I think you're very good on the radio. Radio, radio. I want pictures. Mr. Goldwyn, you got to help me. I want to win an Academy Award. Jack, let's talk about it some other time. What? I'm very... I'm way behind my appointments. I spent the whole morning talking to Hoagie. Hoagie? Yes, Hoagie Michelson. <laughs> That's Hoagie Carmichael. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, now, getting back to me, Mr. Goldwyn, why can't you produce a picture that'll make me win the Academy Award? Why? Tell me why. Well, Jack, maybe I can. Let me see how I look without those thick glasses that you have on. Take them off. All right. There. Now, see how I look with my glasses off? See how blue my eyes are? You know, that'll help if we make it in Technicolor. And look how, look how long my lashes are. Real, too. As a matter of fact, Mr. Goldwyn... You can put your glasses back on. Mr. Goldwyn went out to lunch. <laughs> but how could he leave? I was standing against the door. He jumped out the window. <laughs> out the window? Let me see. He didn't get away, boss. I caught him. Well, hold him. I'll be right down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Mr. Samuel Goldwyn for appearing on my program. His next release will be The Secret Life of Walter Mitty with my friend Danny Kay. I also want to thank Hoagie Carmichael, who appears with the courtesy of the makers of the Fifth Avenue Candy Bar. And ladies and gentlemen, be sure to listen in next Sunday as we haven't the slightest idea what we're going to do. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where we find Jack trying to fix his broken phonograph. Uh, hand me the screwdriver, Rochester. I want to tighten the last screw on this phonograph. Here you are. There. That ought to fix it. I'll turn it on. Hmm. 
Uh, too fast. <laughs> what record was that? Bing Crosby singing White Christmas. <laughs> Sounded more like Effie Boone singing Mother of the Green. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't understand what's wrong with this phonograph. It's never given me trouble before. Well, boss, maybe if I took this and... Oh, Rochester, now look what you've done. You've knocked the horn off. <laughs> and you tipped over the dog, too. <laughs> This is be kind to animals, we. I'm sorry, boss. Let's take another look at the motor and see what's wrong. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here's a loose wire, and I see where it's supposed to go. I'll just take it and plug it in. Pull out the plug! Pull out the plug! <laughs> What a shock. He was an, enough to make my hair stand on end. You want me to go in your room and see? <laughs> you don't have to. I'm wearing it. The show won't be as short as you think. Now, there, there's the wire is fixed. Now, let's try some... Now, let's try some other... Let's try some other records. Uh, all right, let's try some other record. What have we got in that album? Let me see. I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles, Dardanella, The Sheep of Araby, I Found a Million Dollar Whoop. Baby. <laughs> oh. Keep the home fires burning, and after the ball is over. No, no, I don't want to spoil those. Play some of the old ones. <laughs> Go ahead. Boss, any records older than these are on cylinders. Oh, uh, well, so, uh, put some of these on. I want to try it out. Yes, sir. Shall we put in a new needle? No, Roger. The needle we have was guaranteed to play a thousand records. We've only used it 873 times. Mm, what a memory. Memory nothing. Count the notches in the side of the phonograph. <laughs> now, let's turn it on and see if the record changer is working there. Yes, sir. Rochester, what's happened? Why is the phonograph throwing the records up in the air? We never should have fixed it with those parts out of the toaster. <laughs> well, well, I think that... Come in. Hello, Jack. What are you doing? Rochester and I were just fixing... <laughs> Duck, Mary, here comes the Sheik of Araby. <laughs> Rochester, turn that thing off. We'll use it without the changer. Yes, sir. Jack, what's going on here? Uh, Rochester and I fixed the phonograph. Again? Why don't you get rid of that old thing and buy a new one? Mary, this phonograph isn't so old. Go on. Edison's fingerprints are still on it. <laughs> What? And she means Edison, the boy. <laughs> Look, Mary, the phonograph works all right now. I mean, I not only fixed it, but I modernized it and brought it right up to date. I'll bet you did. Well, if you don't believe it, try it yourself. All right. You got two nickels for a dime? <laughs> oh, Mary, put in the dime. Be a sport. <laughs> you no, know, it plays it plays three records that way. If you put in a quarter, you get a sandwich, a cup of coffee, and a dive to the movie star at home. <laughs> we haven't perfected that yet. Go ahead, Mary, put in the dime. I'll take your word for it. Say, Jack, am I the first one here for rehearsal? Yeah, but the others will be here pretty soon. By the way, Mary, I haven't seen you in a couple of days. What's new? Oh, nothing, Mike. Oh, I got a letter from Mama yesterday. A letter from your mother? Well, what does the happy Chandler of Plainfield have to say? <laughs> I'll read it to you. Go ahead. <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary, just a few lines to let you know that we are all well and hope you are the same. We've been very busy with the spring planting. Your sister, Babe, helped Papa with the plowing. She did a swell job, but I'll be glad when the horse gets better. <laughs> Mary, your, your, your sister, Babe, pulled the plow? 
Jack, she's as strong as a horse. Yes, and when you put a straw hat on her, you can't... Jack, please. <laughs> Excuse me, go ahead with the letter. And Mary, your sister Babe has a new boyfriend. Yeah. He is a local undertaker here, and I wish he'd give him up. I'm sick of him coming into the house with those second-hand flowers. <laughs> but even though he's an undertaker, he's a very progressive and advertises on the radio. His theme song is How Are Things in Rigor Mortis. <laughs> You no, know, it could be to eat his urn. <laughs> hey, I'm hot to die. Everybody's hot today. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if I get a guest shot on this program. Really. And Mary, yeah. they nearly finished building the new high school here. It's very beautiful and modern and will cost over a million dollars. Whoop! <laughs> Jack, are you still doing that? I'm sorry. Go on with the letter. <clears throat> Your father's lodge held their annual celebration last Saturday night. Your father was the guest of honor, and every time he stood up to make his speech, he banged his head. Banged his head? He kept complaining that the ceiling was too low. Oh. It wasn't until the party was half over that he found out he was under the table. <laughs> <laughs> he made his speech to three cockroaches and a midget who had come in out of the rain. <laughs> Your mother's a regular Milton girl. <laughs> well, that's about all the news, Mary. So we'll close with love and kisses from your mother, Hop Along Livingston. <laughs> what a letter. You know, Mary, I can't understand your mother. Oh, Jack, there's nothing wrong with Mama. Maybe not, but I wouldn't be married to her for a million dollars. Whoop! <laughs> Mary, you too? Yeah, I must be contagious. Yeah. Hey, that must be some of the gang. Come in! Well, well, it's Dennis. Where? <laughs> it's you. It's you. Come on in. Hello, kid. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. How are you, Dennis? Fine. Gee, it sure is hot out. Well, it certainly is. This morning, my uncle fried an egg on the sidewalk. He did? Yeah. Yesterday, he fried an egg on the sidewalk, too. No kidding. Yeah. You know where you can find an apartment? <laughs> oh, so so that's the reason. Yeah, I feel sorry for your uncle. Yeah, so do I. He likes his eggs boiled. <laughs> no, fine. <laughs> Dennis, it's really a shame that your uncle has to live out on the street. Yeah, what a place to spend a honeymoon. All right, all right. Now, look, Dennis, the scripts aren't here yet, so we can run over your song before rehearsal. Uh, what number are you going to do? Well, I made a record of a new song, and I brought it with me. Would you like to hear it? Sure, kid, sure. Put it on the phonograph. Okay. <laughs> Is this deductible for my income tax? <laughs> oh, sure, it's a business expense, you know. Now, go ahead, turn it on. Okay. Jack, what are you doing with that knife? I'm putting another notch on the side of the phonograph. Come on, kid, let's hear the song. <laughs> Dennis? Dennis, that's, uh, that was a very good song, and I'm glad you recorded it. It'll sound swell on the... Dennis, where'd you get that sandwich? It came out of the phonograph. <laughs> Well, what do you know? It worked. Hmm? Yeah, but not very well. Huh? What a sandwich. It's like a ham between two records. Well, that's uh, sort of a double decker. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, I had my glasses on. <laughs> anyway, that, that was a good joke. I thought it was corny. Oh, you did, eh? Yeah, you want to make something out of it? <laughs> yeah. Hit him again, Mary. <laughs> Dennis, just because my humor goes over your head, don't think that you... Come in! Well, here's Phil, Don, and the quartet. Hello, fellas. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Jack. Mm. Well, boys, as soon as the scripts get here, we can start rehearsal. Okay. Hey, by the way, Phil. Man, you look wonderful. Nice color in your cheeks and everything. Yes, sir. You can congratulate me, Jackson. I'm a changed man. A changed man. Jack and I finally realized I was on the wrong road. I had to do something. Well, what made you realize it? Well, the other night, I went to bed like I always do. I had a good night's sleep, and when I got up in the morning, I staggered all over the room, reached for a chair, and fell flat on my face. <laughs> when did that happen? Thursday morning. Phil, that was the earthquake. 
<laughs> Holy smoke, and I gave up drinking. Phil. Wait a minute, Jackson. Hand me that phone. I got to call Frankie before it's too late. Why, what's the matter? He's on his way to a sanitarium to take the cure. <laughs> Well, let him go, Phil. Believe me, it, it won't harm him permanently, I'm sure you will. Hey, Mr. Benny, you know what happened to me during the earthquake? What did? My mother was giving me a haircut. When things started to shake, she cut one of my ears off. You know what? She cut Dennis, one of my you, ears you, off. You, you got two ears. Now, yes. Now, cut that! <laughs> That's the silliest thing I ever heard. Now, yes. Jack. What? I want to do some shopping. What about the rehearsal? Well, the scripts will be here in a couple of minutes. Oh, say, Jack, I, I meant to ask you, how did you finally make out with Sam Goldwyn last week? Are you trying to do a picture for him? Uh, no, Don. Uh, you see, Mr. Goldwyn wants me to, but uh, his next picture isn't my type. It's going to be uh, Les Miserables. Les Miserables? Yes, by Victor Hoagie. <laughs> That's Victor Hugo. You got him mixed up with Hoagie Michelson. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, anyway, Mr. Goldwyn and I are going to work out... A... Hey, that must be the script. Come in. Hello, 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 everybody. Long time no see. Well, Steve. Hey, kids, it's my publicity man, Steve Bradley. Well, 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 well. Steve. Well, Steve, what brings you around? What's up? We've got to do something about your publicity. Publicity? Yes, and last week I conducted a popularity poll and compared with the poll I made three years ago, you've only moved up one place. One place? When did that happen? When Hitler killed himself. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Steve. Hello, time to lose, Benny. I thought it was so urgent that when I couldn't reach you by telephone, I sent a message by carrier pigeon. Carrier pigeon? Oh, that must have been the pigeon that landed on my windowsill. Yeah, yeah. Didn't you see the message tied to his ankle? No, 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 Rochester. Don't look at me, boss. You ain't the leg. <laughs> See, I thought the paper on that leg was a pansy there. Anyway, Steve, I appreciate you worrying about me, but I don't need any publicity. As a matter of fact, only two weeks ago, my picture was on the cover of Newsweek magazine. Hey, Jackson, was that your face? Certainly. How do you like that? I thought it was an ad for spam. <laughs> That's because the photographer told me to stick my stick out my tongue. <laughs> Say someone turns the page and you got a place to wet his fingers. Yeah. They think of everything. All right, Benny, I think that picture on the cover of Newsweek was great, but you got to follow it up with something. It's some sort of a stunt. Now, wait a minute, Steve. I don't want any more of your stunt. The last time you had an idea, you wanted me to go to Texas, climb into the big inch pipeline, and swim all the way to New York. And you had it time, so I'd crawl out the other end on Groundhog Day. <laughs> No more of that for me. Yeah, I know, I know, but this new idea is different. Benny, I've got an idea that'll make you loved and respected by everybody in the country. Me? Yes, sir. We'll make... Take one of the great men in American history, like, well, say, like, uh, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln? Yes, sir. From now on, you're going to do everything Lincoln did. You're going to act like Lincoln, talk like Lincoln. Yes, sir, even walk like Lincoln. But, Steve, I, I don't know how Lincoln walked. Don't you remember? <laughs> now, look, Steve, unless you've got an idea that makes sense, I don't want any part of it. I don't want any... Now, now go home and... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold it, hold it, hold it. What? Why didn't I think of this idea before? What an idea. All right, what is it? Baseball. Huh? Look, Bob Hope bought himself the Cleveland Indians. Bing Crosby bought the Pittsburgh Pirates. And today, what is everyone talking about? The weather. <laughs> Damn it. Is it unusual? No, no. What are you getting at, Steve? Benny, you've got to have a baseball team. Well, look, Steve, I like the idea, but a baseball team is liable to run into a lot of money. Now, leave it to me, Benny. I'll find you a team that won't cost you much trouble. Good, good. I'll get a team that's not known with a proper training in a year or so. You can sell it to somebody else and turn yourself a net profit of a million dollars. Say, that sounds pretty... Jack, how come you didn't go whoop? When it's coming my way, there's no need for it. <laughs> now, all right, Steve, it's a great idea. Go out and get me a baseball team. Leave it to me, Benny. So long, everybody. Hey, 
You know, kids, I think Bradley's got a good idea with that baseball team. Anyway, I think Steve Bradley is right. If having a baseball team is good for Hope and Crosby, it's good for me, too. You want to know something, Jackson? I used to play baseball. In fact, I was on a team where every player was a band leader. Really, Phil? Yeah, but they threw me out. Why? Every time I slid into third base, I'd spike Jones. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you can't get the first base hairs. When they handed out brains, they threw you a curve. <laughs> Well, nobody threw you a curve. You just sat in the bleachers too long without a hat. <laughs> Believe me. You know, Mr. Benny, a bunch of my friends came over to my house yesterday and asked me to play baseball. Oh, did you play? Yeah, but every time I hit the ball, I broke a window. What? I broke seven windows. Well, kid, you must have played too close to the house when you went outside. Oh, outside! <laughs> You play baseball inside the house? Yeah, you want to make something out of it? Oh, be quiet. <laughs> Jack, what? why don't you stop sitting around? I got some shopping to do. Let's get on with the rehearsal. Mary, we can't. The scripts aren't here they yet. They aren't? No. Well, why don't you call up NBC and see what's wrong? All right, I will. <laughs> play Mabel? What is it, guys, Sue? <laughs> You get it, will you? Okay. Now, it's no good to sing company. Oh, hello. What? Oh, just a minute, I'll connect you. Mabel, it's Mr. Benny. I wonder what Sam Face wants now. <laughs> he wants me to connect him with the mimeograph department because they haven't delivered his script yet. Script? Well, how do you like that? And he palms himself off as an ad-lib comedian. <laughs> yeah. He couldn't ad-lib a click if he had full teeth. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? But I don't care if he can ad-lib or not. I think he's a cute schmo. <laughs> Why do you think he's cute? He's gone out with me more times than he has with you. He has not. He has too. Oh, Mabel, let's not argue. When we look like we do, we should be happy that we've got each other. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I'm expecting Mr. Benny to pop the question any day now. Pop the question? Why, Mabel, how do you know? What happened? What did he say to you? Tell me all about it. Wait. What is buzzing? I won't answer till you tell me. Come on, Mabel, don't keep me in suspense. I'm getting all over goose pimples. Don't hold out on me. You've agitated my curiosity. Tell me what... Go to the switchboard. Oh, okay. Due to a strike, only emergency calls will be handled. <laughs> now, Mabel, tell me what happened. What did he say to you? He didn't say anything. He just kissed me. Why, Mabel flap saddle. <laughs> Yeah, and I felt so silly. Why? When he kisses me with those thick glasses on, I feel like I'm window shopping. <laughs> Honey, I know just what you mean. You do? Yeah. One time when he was kissing me, I saw my reflection in his glasses and I thought someone was watching us. <laughs> Operator, operator. I want the mimeograph to pop up. What? Well, when you get them, tell them to send the scripts out to my house. Goodbye. Well, kids, there's nothing to do but wait. We won't be able to rehearse hold until... Hold on, hold on, Benny, I'm back, I'm back. Steve. Yes, Benny, you wanted the baseball team, but Bradley didn't let you down. That's well. Just sign this contract, and the team is yours for a thousand dollars. Good, good. There you are. Now, what's the name of the team? The BBB. BBBs? What's that? Benny's bought some bloomer girls. <laughs> Bloomer girls. Tell me, Benny, I can see it now all over the sports page. Pictures of Bob Hope and his Indians. Bing Crosby and his pirates. Just Benny and his bloomers. <laughs> but Steve, you can't do this to me. I oh, don't... Benny, I'll see you out of the field. Steve, Steve. How do you like that? A girl's team. I got a good mind. Jack, your slip is showing. Oh, quiet. <laughs> Had to get me a girls' baseball team. I need that like a moose needs a hat rack. 
<laughs> Where did I hear that? Oh, yes, on my repeat broadcast last week. Can't understand why I didn't get a laugh. Maybe, I don't know, maybe he was too clever. Too clever, too clever. <laughs> Quiet, Polly. <laughs> well, everybody's gone home. I might as well practice on my violin. Oh, Rochester. Rochester, give me A, will you? That's close enough. Better pack my exercises first. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Company. Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, over these many years that I've been introducing our scintillating star, my one regret has been that I'm not a poet. For if I were, I would paint a word picture with colorful phrases. What a beautiful thought, Don. I can just imagine you a poet. Henry Wadsworth Fatfellow. <laughs> Let's continue, Don. However, you don't have to be a Shelley or a Keats to... Hmm... I'll get it down. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, you certainly picked a fine time to call. Why aren't you listening to the program? That's why I call, boss. There's something wrong with the radio. Oh, maybe there's a break in the electric cord. You know, the one that runs from the radio to where we've got it plugged in. I thought of that, boss, so I traced it. I started at the radio, went around the baseboard, up to the windowsill, out the window, across the driveway, through the hedge, and right to the plug on Mr. Coleman's back porch. <laughs> Say, Rochester, I hope nobody saw you. Well, just as I reached the porch, Mrs. Coleman came out, so I ducked behind the hedge and meowed like a cat. Did you fool her? I think so. She left two saucers of milk. <laughs> Two? Yeah, one had a note on it. This one's for Mr. Benny. <laughs> Good, I'll have it when I get home. Anyway, Rochester, if the cord is plugged in right, maybe there's something wrong with the radio itself. Did you check the tubes? Mm-hmm. The condenser? Mm-hmm. The transformer? Mm-hmm. The dial? Boss, I even put murine in the magic eye. <laughs> oh. I don't know what to do. I hate to miss your program. Well, I've got an idea, Rochester. I'll leave the receiver off the hook, and you'll be able to hear the whole show over the telephone. Yes, sir. Okay, Don, let's get on with the program. Ladies and gentlemen, as I was saying, even though I'm not a poet, today I'd like to introduce our star with a little poem. A poem? Yes. To Jack Benny. I love my boss, but he's so cheap, he only spends a slow buck. Slow buck? His suits are from Montgomery Ward. His hair from Sears and Roebuck. <laughs> what? And here he is, Jack Benny. <laughs> hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. Hmm, hair from Sears and Roebuck. <laughs> Don, I can write poetry, too. As a matter of fact, I have one about you. Oh, about me? Yes. Reynolds flew around the world in a plane that was made to order. But if he tried to fly around you, he wouldn't get south of the border. <laughs> Hello, Jackson. Your name may not be John Greenleaf, but you're much wittier. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, Jack, how can you compare flying around the world with me? I'm not so fat. You're not, eh? Don, there's a three-hour difference in time between your belt buckle and back pocket. <laughs> Next week, it'll be four hours. Hey, Jackson, if you really want to wait get... Wait a minute, Phil. Wait a minute. I want to see what Rochester thought of that joke. Hello? 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 Rochester, Hello? Hello? Hello! Rochester, I just told a joke. Where were you? I had to answer the door. The man from the cleaners was here. Oh, what did he want? He found a 50-cent piece on the floor, and he wondered if it came out of your suit. I told him it wasn't yours. Rochester, what makes you so sure it didn't fall out of my suit? Oh, boss, come now! <laughs> what? Before you send a suit to the cleaners, you loosen the lining, finger the cuffs, turn all the pockets inside out, and then run the lid through the sieve three times. Oh, stop making things up. And if you want to hear the program, you better stay at the phone. Yes, sir. And by the way, the mailman was here and just left a package. 
A package? Uh, from Sears and Roebuck. You can be a blonde again. <laughs> good, good. That's the one that makes me look like Nelson Eddy. Now I've got to get on with the show, so don't hang up. Now, Phil, what were you talking about? Well, I was just going to say, Jackson, if you want to get some class on the program, how about doing something different, something entertaining like, well, well, like letting Livy and me sing a song together? Hey, that sounds like a pretty good idea. You'll sing with Phil, won't you, Mary? No, thanks. I sang with Phil before. What about it? I didn't mind him singing about turnip greens, but he kept time by hitting me on the head with a ham hock. <laughs> oh. All right, Livy, all right. So if that's the way you want to feel about it, don't sing with me. I just thought it would be nice to have a trio. Trio? You and Mary would make a nice trio? Yeah. Look, Phil, let me explain something to you. One is a solo, two is a duet. Now, if you add a third person, you've got a trio. Oh. And if you add a fourth person, you have a quartet. Uh Uh-huh. Now, Phil, if you had four people and you found a fifth, what would you have? (laughs) Throw me that lead again, will you? (laughs) All right. If you had four people and you found a fifth, what would you have? A quintet. I fooled you that time, didn't I? <laughs> Why, Phil, that's right. If you had a fifth, you'd have a quintet. Yeah, but they'd all be loaded. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Mary, I don't blame you for not wanting to sing with them. Phil knows absolutely nothing about music. I do, too. Phil, what you know about music, you could write on an ice cube with a branding iron. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> What are you laughing at, Mary? Did you see the way the arranger has to write the music so Phil can read it? No, how? An eighth note is a diamond, a quarter note is a heart, a half note a club, and a whole note a spade. (laughs) Phil, you have your music written out in diamonds, hearts, clubs, and spades? Certainly. How do you read it? Well, it's simple. Look, here, I'll show you. Now, look at this sheet of music. See? That makes no sense at all to me. Sure it does, Jackson. Take this bar, for instance. Now, you see those notes right here? One right after the other? Oh, you mean the scale? Scale? What's that? (laughs) What's that? Phil, what do you call this? That's a flush. (laughs) A flush. Well, look, Phil, what about this next bar? It has two notes, then a space, and then two more notes. That's an inside straight. (laughs) An inside straight? You mean you draw to it? If you play a violin, if you play a trumpet, you blow to it. (laughs) Mary, stop helping us. Phil, if you want to play your music by cards, that's all right with me. But what's this king doing here? That's Petrillo. <laughs> I should have known. All right, all right. We've had enough of that. It's time for a song. Dennis! Dennis! Oh. Dennis, what are you yawning about? I didn't get any sleep last night. My mother and father had a big argument. An argument? Yeah, it was all about you. My mother said you were a jerk. <laughs> hmm. Then my father got up and said you were a great guy and a fine example of a man. You're... Father said that? May he rest in peace. (laughs) Now stop being silly. Your father's sitting right out here in the audience. Yeah, doesn't he look awful? (laughs) Cut that out. Dennis, why does your mother dislike Jack so much? Well, she used to go with Mr. Benny before she met my father. She did not. She says she did. What was your mother's name before she married your father? I didn't know her then. (laughs) Of course you didn't. Now, come on, kid. Let's have your song. Okay. And face the telephone so Rochester can hear it, will you? Like a moose needs a hat rack. I can't understand why that didn't get a laugh. Norman Krasner liked it. That was Dennis Day singing his latest picture recording. Man, you can get killed around here. That was Dennis Day singing his latest picture recording, Mamselle. And now, ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) everything falls down on us, no rehearsals, anything happens. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we're going to present our version of the Universal International Picture based on Betty McDonald's bestseller, The Egg and I. In our interpretation... Jack, you can't do The Egg and I. Fred Allen did it last week. I heard it, Don. But this won't conflict with the way Alan did it. You see, we're going to do a comedy version. (laughs) Anyway, folks, in our play tonight, I will be Fred McMurray, and Mary Livingston will be Claudette Colbert. What part am I going to play, Jack? Well, Don, the scene takes place on a farm, so you can play the part of our pig. (laughs) Oh, Jack, every time you do a farm sketch, I play the part of a pig. I want to do something else. Well, what would you like to be, Don? A canary. 
Don, you a canary? Beep, 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 beep. Well, that's not so bad. All right, Don, you can be the canary, but in order for people to believe it, do you happen to have a yellow suit? Yellow suit? No, no, I haven't. Oh. Well, why don't you step out in the street and put on a taxi cab? <laughs> And now for... Oh, wait a minute. Before we start, I want to go to the telephone and see if Rochester is enjoying the show. Hello? Hello? <laughs> How do you like that? Rochester! <laughs> Put on a coffee, honey! <laughs> Rochester, we're going to do a play and I want you to hear it. Okay, you're the boss. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the egg and I... As the scene opens, we find the newlyweds, Claudette and Fred, driving out to their new home. <laughs> Gee. <clears throat> Gee, Claudette, I hope you like the new farmhouse I bought. Oh, I know I will, Mr. McMurray. Oh, you can call me Fred. We've been... Married a week now. <laughs> Remember after the preacher said, I pronounce you man and wife, we turned to each other and shook hands? Oh, yes. <laughs> and gee. Gee, you were nervous. I was not nervous. You were, too. You put the ring on the preacher's finger and gave me ten dollars. <laughs> ten dollars? Gee, I was nervous. Anyway, it <laughs> sure was a wonderful wedding. All our friends were there. The music played softly. And we made a lovely-looking couple as we marched down the aisle. Yes, but don't you think it would look nicer if I had carried the flowers? <laughs> they were bluebells. They went so well with my eyes. <laughs> but, darling, wasn't it exciting as we drove away from the church with those shoes tied in back of the car? Yeah. I wonder what made them bounce like that. My mother was still in them. <laughs> oh, yes. I cut her loose when we went through Anaheim. <laughs> they can always use another smudge pot there. <laughs> Well, here we are. Look, darling, there's our new home. Gee, it sure looks run down. Yeah, but we'll fix it up. There's the man from the real estate office. Oh, mister, mister. Yes? <laughs> I, I just bought this house. Uh, you're the man from the real estate office, aren't you? Yes, Nelson's the name. I'm here to show you around. Gee, what a peculiar style of architecture this house has. It's not French Normandy. Is it early American? No, crummy colonial. <laughs> well, let's go inside. Come on, honey. All right. I'm talking to my wife. <laughs> oh, now follow me. Here's the front door. A few quarts of oil will fix that. Uh, come on, Fred. Let's go in. Uh, just follow me, folks. I'll show you through the house. This is the living room. This is the dining room. And this is the bedroom. Gee. Uh, Mr. Nelson, does the bathroom have a tile floor? Shall we go out and see? <laughs> Oh. Uh, Mr. Nelson, I'd like to see the kitchen. Uh, right through this door. There. Isn't it a beauty? Well, I don't know. The stove looks very old and awfully dirty. Oh, that's just a little dust. I'll blow it off. Mister, have you tried Sen Sen? <laughs> Never mind that. Gee, this, this place does look run down. Yes, but with a little work, you can make it look like a million dollars. Whoops. <laughs> well, it's getting kind of late. I better go. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Nelson. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Nelson. Mr. Nelson! Oh, you. Nobody wants me to have any fun. Goodbye. <laughs> well, darling... Here we are in our own little home. Well, we better start getting to sleep. You're on a farm. You have to get up at four in the morning. You're right, sweetheart. Good night. Good night. Good night. Get out of here! <laughs> uh... 
Darling. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> Darling, you're snoring. <laughs> No, no, that's the rooster. It's morning. Oh, oh. Well, you hurry and get breakfast ready. I'll go out and milk the cows. It's a good thing I slept in my clothes. <laughs> my, it's pitch dark this early in the morning. Now, where's that milking pail? Ah, here it is. Easy, bossy, easy. That's a good girl, bossy. Easy, bossy, easy. Gee, I can't seem to find... Uh-oh, wrong end. <laughs> now, now. Easy, bossy, easy. <laughs> oh, wrong animal. Now, where... <laughs> now, where... Where's that cow? Meh. Ah, there you are, bossy. Now hold still while I fix the pail and stool. There. That's a good girl. Oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> oh, la, 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 la. Oh, la, 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 la. Hmm, better change. Oh, Fred, are you through milking? I'm not, but I think the cow is. <laughs> hey, hey, what are you holding? Look, I just found it. It's a black kitten with a white stripe down its back. Well, shucks. If that isn't the cutest little... Kitty, have you tried Sen Sen? <laughs> Now, Claudette, don't stand around. We've got to feed the animals. Okay. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, look, Fred, isn't it cute the way our canary follows us around? <laughs> yeah. Now, shoo, canary, shoo, shoo. We've got to feed the chickens. Here, chick, 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 chick. Come on, chick, 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 chick. Here's some corn for you. Oh, Fred, look at that hen sitting on the nest. Where? Oh, yes. Now we've got breakfast. Well, I better get some uh, oats for the horse, hay for the cow, and. Uh... Oink, 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 oink. <laughs> uh... <laughs> what? what? What happened? Our canary stepped on the pig and killed it. <laughs> Gee, that's too bad. What a canary. I should have gotten suspicious when he bent the bars in his cage. Uh, Claudette. Uh, Claudette, maybe the canary is hungry. He can't be. A little while ago, I gave him a side of beef. Well, give him the other side. Now, let's get on with the... Oh, look, here comes someone. Hello. Howdy, neighbors. Howdy. Zeke Harris is my name. Live right over the hill from you. Well, do you have a farm over there? Yep, I raise a little of this, a little of that, mostly corn. For your pig? No, for my still. Oh, you, you have a still? Yes, sir. She'll make 20 gallons a day. 20 gallons a day? That isn't much. Say ain't bad, my old lady don't drink. <laughs> we just moved in here, Zeke. How long have you been living around this session? Well, now, let me see here. I moved here in 1918. That's 1947. That's uh, 15 years. <laughs> Wait a minute, Zeke. From 1918 to now, it's 29 years you've lived here. Well, we don't count the 14 years of prohibition as left. <laughs> oh. oh, got any children? Yeah, I've got two sons, but we ain't seen them since they ran away with the circus. That was 10 years ago. Sure, Mr. the boy. <laughs> shame both of them left. Maybe one of them will come back. Ain't likely. They're Siamese twins. 
<laughs> oh, Siamese twins, eh? Yep, they're pretty attached to each other. <laughs> oh, Zeke, if you just had a partner, you'd be another one of them Lum and Abners. Howdy, Zeke. Good to see you all. Well, hello. Uh... Uh, Ma Kettle is the name. Live right down the road. Which house? No house, just down the road. <laughs> No how? Yep, she's married to Paul Kettle, the laziest man in the state. He's the laziest man in the world. One day he sat on an acorn. Twenty years later we had to shake him out of the tree. <laughs> no, Kettle. Well, what do you know? Here comes Paul Kettle, the lazy quitter now. Name is Dennis, but folks call him Paul. Howdy, Paul. Hi, Zeke. Hi, folks. Ma, put your arms around me and squeeze me. I feel like exhaling. <laughs> There, that feels better. Any place to lie down around here? Oh, Paul, stand up for a while. Uh, by the way, what are you folks figuring on raising here? Chickens. <laughs> oh, wouldn't try it if I were you. Tried to raise some myself a few years ago. Never had any luck. What happened? Bought ten hens that laid a lot of eggs, but none of them never did hatch. Well, how many roosters did you have? Oh, roosters. <laughs> Well, I guess I better be going along now. Got to go home and help my pig write a letter. Your pig writes a letter? <laughs> yeah, I just tell him how to spell, and he already has the pen and ink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paul Kettle, you may be a hick, but... Why don't you finish? Too lazy. <laughs> well, look, my wife and I are just going in to have breakfast. Why don't you folks come in and join us? That's okay with me. Me too. Pick me up, Ma. Well, come on. Let's all go in and... Hey, wait a minute. What happened to Zeke? Where's Zeke Harris? Oh, he had to run along. He's got his own show. <laughs> what? I can stay till Wednesday. <laughs> this is NBC, the national broadcasting company. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Passengers, please step to the rear. Step to the back of the bus, please. Oh, isn't this awful, Catherine? You'd think some gentleman would get up and give one of us a seat. I beg your pardon, ladies, but would any of you care to sit down? Oh, you're very kind, isn't he, Catherine? He certainly is. He got up and gave the three of us a seat. <laughs> Yes. He has a very big heart. <laughs> hey, aren't you Don Wilson, Jack Benny's announcer? Well, yeah, yes, yes, I am. Oh, I just love that program. It has so many interesting characters. They act so crazy. Oh, Jeanette, they only do that to make people laugh on the radio. That, those things never happen in real life. <laughs> oh, they don't, huh? Well, now let me tell you something that really happened yesterday. What was it? Well, Jack Benny, Phil Harris, and Dennis Day dropped into the corner drugstore to get a bite to eat. What are you going to have, Phil? I don't know, Jackson. What are you going to have? I don't know. How about you, Dennis? I don't know. See, it's so hard to decide what to... Hmm, just look at that. Waiter, waiter. Yes, sir. Look, there's lipstick on my glass. Well, there's water in it, too. Wash it off. <laughs> Their bread should be that fresh. <laughs> well, Phil, have you decided yet? Yeah, I think I know what I want, Jackson. What'll it be, sir? A roast beef sandwich and a fifth of milk. <laughs> Phil, milk doesn't come and fit. Well, how do I know? It's the first time I ever ordered this stuff. <laughs> Dennis, have you made up your mind yet? Yeah. Way to bring me a dish of ice cream with a strip of bacon on it. <laughs> Dennis, ice cream with bacon? That's ridiculous. Why don't you have it with chocolate syrup? Okay. Way to bring me some bacon with chocolate, chocolate syrup on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> Hey, what are you going to have, Jackson? Yeah, I don't know. Hey, waiter, what would you suggest? How about lamb stew? Mm, no. Some veal cutlets? Mm, no, I'm going home soon. I just want something to hold me together. How about some scotch tape? <laughs> Look, just get their orders and I'll think of what I want. 
Let's see. Hey, Dennis, how's your Colgate show doing? Oh, it's fine. I like the idea of having two shows. Gee, I don't know what to order. Yeah. How's your pitch bandwagon doing, Phil? Great, kid, great. Alice just picked up my option for another 13 weeks. <laughs> Maybe I ought to Holy have... smoke, Jackson. Haven't you made up your mind yet what you want to eat? Well, how can I think with you fellas always talking? I got two shows. I got two shows. I got two shows. <laughs> That's all you hear. Two shows. You ought to be ashamed of yourself putting other people out of work with two shows. I haven't got two shows. They've got two shows. Well, bully for them. <laughs> what? Here are your orders, gentlemen. Now, what do you have? Well, I think I'll have a hamburger. And let's see, do you have any hot chocolate? No, but here's a Hershey bar and a match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nuts. They're in it, too. <laughs> Never mind. Just, just give me that piece of chocolate cake right there. That's vanilla. It is not vanilla. It's chocolate. I'll dust it off and show you. <laughs> Don't bother. Just give me a piece of that huckleberry pie. You want to make a bet? <laughs> well, give it to me, whatever it is. A man could starve to death in here, deathy. <laughs> now, give me that pie. Hey, Jackson, Jackson. Huh? Hey, look. Look at that beautiful blonde coming toward the counter. Oh, yeah. Hey, Phil, she's heading this way. I'll move over one, then she'll have to sit between us. Hmm. Forgot I was sitting on the end stool. <laughs> Help me up off the floor, Phil. Well, there's a switch, me picking you up. <laughs> well, look, fellas, I gotta go home now. Look, I'll see you later. Hey, Jackson, so wait a minute. Wait a minute, Jackson. What about the check? Jackson, what about the... Hmm, after 11 years, you'd think I'd know better. <laughs> How tight can a guy... Hey, Dennis, what are you looking at? That magazine over there, Ronald Coleman's picture's on the cover. Oh, yeah, Ronald. Gee, look at him. With those broad shoulders, intelligent eyes, pearly teeth, dimple in the chin... If he was one inch taller, he'd look just like me. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ronnie. Man, he sure is handsome. Thank you, old fellow. It was awfully nice of you to say that. <laughs> hey! Hey, Dennis, you know something? You sounded just like him. Yeah, I like to do imitations. Yeah, you're doing pretty good, too, kid. You know, I can hardly wait. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Huh? Hey, look, I got a great idea. Hey, you want to have some fun, kid? Yeah, how? Well, now, look. Let's give Jackson time to get home, then we'll call him on the phone. You disguise your voice like Ronald Coleman's and invite him over to his house for a party. Oh, boy, come on. Let's go in that phone booth. Well, take it easy. Take it easy now. we got to give him plenty of time to get home. He's walking, and he ain't really 38, you know. <laughs> All right, while we're waiting, let's play the jukebox. One of my records is in it. Oh, your record's okay. Here you are. I'll drop a nickel in there, huh? Well, here's my house. Wasn't such a long walk out to Beverly Hills after all. <laughs> mm, I might as well plant grass out of my front yard. They won't let me park cars here anymore. <laughs> let me see. Now, where's my key to the front door? Here's the key to my car. Here's the key to the back door. Here's the key to my hope chest. Key to my trunk. <laughs> key to the garage. Here's the key to that can of salmon I had last night. <laughs> Why do I save those things? <laughs> oh, here it is. Is that you, boss? Rochester, what are you doing at home? You're supposed to be out at the Hillcrest Golf Course looking for my golf ball. It's no use, boss. I've been looking for that ball for three weeks now, and I just can't find it. Well, did you look behind all the rocks? Uh -huh. Did you look in all the bushes? Mm -hmm. Did you look down the gopher hole? I even took the gophers to a doctor's office and had them x-rayed. <laughs> you had the gophers x-rayed? We found six acorns, a bunch of roots, a Canadian penny, but no golf ball. What? One of them had gallstones and he pulled us for a while. <laughs> well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard, taking gophers to a doctor's office. I wish you would... Wait a minute, Rochester. What's that? What, what's that wiggling around your pocket? A gopher. I thought you'd like him for a pet. Oh. Look, boss. He's digging out at you. Oh, isn't he cute? Look at that sweet little face. Got blue eyes just like mine. <laughs> uh, 
I wonder if I could get his teeth straightened. <laughs> Imagine the patter of little gopher feet around the house. <laughs> Say, Rochester, how'd you happen to pick this one to bring home? He's the one with the Canadian penny. <laughs> oh. When do we operate, boss? Stop <laughs> joking. Now, Rochester, you better go back out of the golf course and keep looking for the ball. It must be... Hey, I just thought of something. Maybe we looked in the wrong place. Now, we took it for granted that I hit that ball in the rough. Maybe I hit such a good shot it landed right on the green. Oh, boss, come now! <laughs> Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, we'll look for the ball tomorrow. By the way, Rochester, what are we going to have for dinner? Six acorns, a bunch of roots, and southern fried gopher. <laughs> I don't want that. Just open a can of sardines. Okay, give me a key, Gene. Here you are. In a hurry. I haven't had anything but a dusty piece of pie all day. I'll be in the... There's the phone. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, old boy. This is Ronald Coleman. Ronald Coleman? Well, Ronnie, how are you? Splendid, splendid, thank you. Good, good. How's Benita? Who? <laughs> Benita, your wife. Oh, oh, I thought you said Santa Anita. <laughs> Benita's fine. Good, good. Oh, uh, by the way, Jack, what are you doing tonight? Nothing, nothing. Why? Well, Benita and I are having a little party at the house, and we'd love to have you come over. Tonight? Gee, that'll be swell, Ronnie. What time should I be there? Uh, just a minute. I'll ask Santa Anita. <laughs> Who? Uh, Benita, my wife. Oh. Hey, Phil, what time shall I tell him to be there? Nine o'clock and tell him to bring his girl with him. Hello, Jack. Benita says nine would be fine and to bring your lady friend with you. You mean my girl, Gladys Zabisco? Yes, we've both been anxious to meet her. Hey, kid, kid, tell him at the costume party. Oh, uh, by the way, Jack, when you come over tonight, we wish you'd wear something. <laughs> What? A costume party, you know. Oh, a costume party. Gee, that'll be fun. We'll be there at 9 o'clock sharp. Goodbye, Ronnie. Goodbye, Jack. Hey, Rochester. Rochester, I've been invited over to Mr. and Mrs. Coleman for a party tonight. You want me to get your tuxedo? No, no, this is a costume party. Gee, I don't know how to dress. Well, why don't you wear your toupee upside down and go to the bird's nest? <laughs> Say, maybe I... No, it would tickle me. Hey, wait a minute. I know where I can get a cowboy costume. That's it. I'll go as a cowboy. Are you going to take Miss Livingston? No, no. She's out of town this week. I'm going to take my old girlfriend, Gladys Abisco. She'll love it. <laughs> Gee, Gladys, it's... Nice out tonight, isn't it? It sure is, Feeney. <laughs> I'm glad you were able to make it. I thought that since it's so close to Thanksgiving, you might be busy. Oh, I got Hilda to fill in for me. But can Hilda do your work? Oh, sure. She can pluck turkeys faster than anybody. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a feather in her cap. <laughs> So witty, Speedy. What people say in Georgie Gentle, I'll never know. Gee, Gladys, you'll like the Coleman. Ronnie and Benita are regular guys. Even though they're high class and interested in things like opera and art. Art? Oh, then maybe. No, no, I... no, Gladys, no. Don't show them your tattoos. <laughs> keep your keep, keep your sleeves down, you know. God, Gladys, you look so cute in your costume. So western. So do you, Speedy. We were both lucky to find that costume shop open so late. Yeah, they certainly fixed me up with a complete cowboy outfit. Lasso, ten-gallon hat, and a gun. I can't wait till we get to the Ronald Coleman. Oh, uh, Ronnie. What is it, Benita? Close the living room windows before you got into bed. I did, darling. Well, if you're ready to go to sleep, I'll turn out the light. No, 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 just a minute. I'm not quite through reading. Uh, you know, Benita, this is really exciting. You must read it when I'm through with it. Oh, I've already read it. 
You know, there's one part there where... No, 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 don't tell me, don't tell me. I want to find out myself what Mumbles is going to do. (laughs) (laughs) He's an interesting fellow. Well, you can find out tomorrow. I'm going to turn out the lights. All right, just a moment. There. All right, you can turn it out now. You know, Benita, I know you won't think I'm conceited, but Random Harvest is one of the best pictures ever made. (laughs) I agree with you, darling. Now, shut up the projector and let's go to sleep. (laughs) All right. Oh, I'm glad we turned in early tonight. Got a lot of retakes for the studio tomorrow morning. Yes, I know. Good night, Ronnie. Good night, darling. Benita, you're snoring. I thought that was you. Oh, goodness. It's the front door. I wonder who in the world could... Well, it's the butler's night off, and there's only one way to find out. Uh, go down and see who it is, down. Hey, Suppose it's a burglar. What would I do? I don't know. I've never been in a picture with that particular situation. <laughs> it's probably a telegram. I put on your robe and go to the door. Oh, all right. All right, all right. I'm coming. I'm coming. Imagine getting a man out of a nice warm bed. Upstairs, we we'll go get the little woman down here. Now, look. Oh, all right, hurry, you bother. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> oh, Benita, Benita, it's Jack Benny. Jack Benny? Yes, and he has a gun. <laughs> well, lend him what he wants and send him home. <laughs> doesn't want to borrow anything this time. He thinks we're having a party. <laughs> party? Not funny, my dear. You should have seen Benny and that girl bursting in here with those silly costumes. Costumes? Yes, Benny's dressed up like Roy Rogers. Oh, what does the girl look like? Trigger. <laughs> Just because you're angry at Jack, I mean, that's no reason to insult the girl. She's probably a pretty little thing. But how old is she? Oh, I don't know. Somewhere between 35 and 40. Oh, she's no chicken. Not with those turkey feathers all over her. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine uh, Benny doing a thing like this. I have a good notion to... Yes, that's what I'll do. Oh, darling, no. We can't stop sending our laundry to him. <laughs> I suppose not. Uh, he is a master with the starch. <laughs> Anyway, I think it's absolutely disgraceful Well, we'll get him back to... into bed. I'll go downstairs and tell him to leave. It's no use, darling. He won't even listen to you. Say, I have a better idea. Get dressed. What? Oh, I know what I'm doing, Benita. Get dressed. Gee, I wish they'd hurry down. They've been upstairs a long time. They sure have, Speedy. Uh, while we're waiting, let's turn on the radio. Okay. Gee, that's our song they're playing. 
Let's dance, Snooksy. It would be an extreme pleasure. <laughs> See what memories this brings back. Our first meeting, we were dancing like this, remember? And as we danced, you sang the words into my ear. Sing them again. Go ahead, Gladys, will you? Okay. Huh? I love to hear you sing. Um, Take you my heart. I love you. We'll never part. I love you. I always do. It would be you. Oh, come on, dance a little closer, sweetie. Okay. <laughs> Those feathers are tickling me. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I've got to get into my costume at the place where I work. Well, don't worry. Gee, I wonder why the Coleman's aren't down yet. Ronnie, do you think it was right of us to sneak out the back way and go to a movie? Yes. And it'll teach Benny a lesson. Well, what movie are we going to see? I don't know, and I don't care. Anything to get away from that man. Well, they're still in our house. How long do you think they'll stay? I have no idea. But tomorrow, open another air wick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you for being upset. It's amazing the way Jack Benny brings out the worst in people. Uh, how do you mean? Well, for instance, take that playwright fella, Norman Krasner. Well, what about Mr. Krasner? Well, usually he's a very brilliant conversationalist. But as soon as he gets around Benny, all he can say is... <laughs> Lisa, please, please. People are staring. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's the theater, Ronnie. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, two loads, please, please. Here you are, sir. By the way, miss, we didn't notice. What picture are you showing? The horn blows at midnight. <laughs> what? Ronnie! Ronnie! Let go of the girl! It's not her fault! Ronnie! Oh. Gene Sweeney, and do you think that Collins and mine is going into their kitchen and getting something to eat? No, it's half past twelve and we're hungry. Mm, they sure have a big refrigerator. Yeah. I wonder what program they want it on. <laughs> now, let's see what's inside. There's some ham and half a roast beef. And... Well, how do you like that? Only this morning I sent Rochester over and they told him they were out of eggs. <laughs> and look, they're lousy with butter, too. <laughs> well, say, Gladys, look. Look, there's a turkey. Please, not on my day off. <laughs> Oh, yes, I forgot. Well, let's eat something. Look, Ronnie, you can see them through our window. They're still in the house. Yes. And I've got to get some sleep. Well, there's only one thing to do, and I'm going to do it. Come on, Benita. Mr. and Mrs. Coleman, you've got the wrong house. You live next door. We know where we live. Just show us Mr. Benny's bedroom. We've got to get some sleep. But, Mr. Coleman! Good, Good night, night Manchester. Manchester. Good night. Sunset Boulevard, next stop. Please leave the bus by the rear exit. Well, this is where I get off, girl. Mr. Wilson, that was a very funny story you told us about Jack Benny. But a thing like that couldn't really happen. Oh, yes, it could. That's why I'm taking the bus to work. Why, Mr. Coleman. Benny's car broke down, and he's using mine. program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight Jack Benny leaves for Chicago, where he starts his vaudeville tour this Friday. So let's go out to Jack's house, where we find Rochester helping him pack. Rochester, did you pack my socks? Yes, boss, I put them right next to your underwear. Good, good. Now let's see, we'll be on the train for two days. That's six meals. 
You better pack 12 sandwiches. <laughs> I'd better, better make it 14. I have yeah, company some night. <laughs> well, it looks like all my clothes are in. Did you bring along my stuff from the medicine cabinet? Yes, sir. I packed your nerve tonic, stomach tonic, liver tonic, heart tonic, brain tonic, muscle tonic, blood tonic, and tonic tonic. <laughs> Tonic, tonic? What, what have I got that for? In case any of the other tonics get run down, that's what they take. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, make sure they're all packed well so they won't break. And, oh, yes, Rochester, take my golf clubs along. I'm going to play in Chicago. Yes, sir. And you better take two golf balls. I might play in New York, too. <laughs> Uh, say, boss, when you're in Chicago, are you going over to visit your hometown? Yeah, good old Waukegan. Yeah, I'll see my cousin Cliff Gordon and my boyhood friend Julia Sinekin. Yeah, I wonder what kind of presents I ought to bring them. Well, what kind of a man is your cousin? Or is your friend? My friend? Well, he's retired. He spends most of his time working for his lodge. He belongs to a lodge? Yes, he's a moose. Oh, I got it. I'll get him a hat rat. <laughs> He liked that. I got the idea from a joke I did on my program a few weeks ago. You know, like a moose needs a hat rack. Can't understand why I didn't get a laugh. Huh? Maybe it isn't funny. Could be. I don't know. Norman Krasner was mad about it. I didn't... Rochester, are you... Rochester, are you all packed? Yes, sir. Good. Well, uh, you know, I kind of hate to leave California, especially at this time of year, when the sun is shining, the flowers are blooming, and the birds are singing. Yeah, I know just how you feel. Imagine me giving up all this fresh air and sunshine just to go back to stuffy old Harlem. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing, Rochester? Taking some of your brain tonic. I'm talking like an idiot. <laughs> You know, oh my goodness, I almost forgot my little black book. You know, I have some wonderful numbers for New York and Chicago. Oh, well, you left it right there on the dresser. Yeah, here it is. Ah, what girl? Joan Robertson, Geraldine Simmons. Ah, that Geraldine Simmons. Hilda Butt. Julia. Julia Wadsworth. Barbara Fritchie. Barbara! <laughs> Barbara Fritchie! She's dead! She is? Gee. Well, I'll put the book in the trunk. Everything else in? Everything. Good. Now close it and lock it. Now, Rochester, I want to see if the burglar-proof lock I put on works. Open the trunk again. Yes, I wonder, I wonder if that's loud enough to wake up the baggage man. <laughs> that's loud enough to wake up Barbara Fritchie. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I'm going to phone Phil Harris and see if he's ready. Don't worry, Jackson, I'll be there. Goodbye. Uh, that was Jackson, honey. Oh, I thought it was the drugstore. The drugstore? Mm-hmm. They made a mistake and delivered the wrong bobby pins. Well, what's wrong with the bobby pins they sent? Well, they're not the right color. They're too dark for me and too light for you. <laughs> well, let's take them anyway and rough it. <laughs> All right. You know, Phil, I like traveling, but it seems a shame to leave our home and start living in hotels. Yeah. Especially when we have a house like this. Gee, honey, it's really beautiful. The rooms are so big and airy and furnished so nicely. The most beautiful home I've ever had. Alice, how much did it cost you? I don't know, but I... Phil, what's this little black, black book? Huh? Well, I'll be darned. That's that little address book I used to keep before we got married. Ah, uh, you dream book if you could only talk. <laughs> Let me look at some of the names and numbers. No, Alice. No, after oh, all. Oh, come on, Phil. Let me look. That's a good boy. Geraldine Simmons. 
<laughs> ah, yeah, that Geraldine Simmons. <laughs> and look, Phil, you used to write notations after each name. Yeah. Marjorie Krause, redhead, has swimming pool. Peggy Flood, brunette, has car. Alice Faye, blonde, has possibilities. <laughs> Why, Phil Harris. Don't get mad, honey. You're the one that got me. You got me. <laughs> I even turned down Geraldine Simmons. Hey, excuse me, honey. I got to call Dennis and find out what songs he's going to do on the trip. I haven't decided yet, Phil. I'll talk to you later about them. Okay, Phil. I got to hang up now. My mother's helping me pack. Goodbye. My little boy is going away from me. Now, now, Mother, don't cry. And Dennis, next Sunday will be Mother's Day and you won't be here. I know, but last year when I was on the road, I remembered Mother's Day. Yes, Dennis. But this year, son, no matter what Mr. Benny tells you, you're supposed to send the candy to me, not him. <laughs> Mother, everyone on the program gives Mr. Benny presents on Mother's Day. It says so in our contract. <laughs> the nerve of Mr. Benny, leaving his parrot here while he's out of town. You know, Mother, that's a very clever parrot. It sounds just like Mr. Benny. If it had it to pay, it would look like him, too. <laughs> Will it be all right for me to take Miss Livingston out to dinner in Chicago? Why, yes, Dennis. Mary's a nice girl. Oh, well, I'll take her anyhow. <laughs> I'll miss you so much when you're gone, but I hope you enjoy yourself. Oh, I will, Mother. I like Chicago in May, and the people out there are all crazy about me. They think I'm a great comedian, and I'm very funny. What makes you say that, Dennis? Well, last year when I was in Chicago, I went swimming in Lake Michigan, and all the people at the beach stood around watching me and laughing at me. I'm going to swim in the lake again and see if I'm still popular. Well, in that case, I'd better pack your bathing suit. Oh, bathing suit. <laughs> Sometimes I, I wonder... Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And... <laughs> Say, Ma, before Dennis leaves, I think I should have a man-to-man -man talk with him. All right. Son, go into the other room with your father. Yes, ma'am. Son, the years keep passing, and now you're a man. I am? Could be. <laughs> and now, son, it's time you knew the facts of life. You know, I was just your age when I took my first trip, son. And it was to Chicago, too. And it was there I first met your mother. Yes? So, son, for goodness sake, be careful. <laughs> yes, father. Now, before you go, here's something I used to treasure when I was single. It uh, might come in handy to you. Gee, a little black address book. Yes, it has some wonderful numbers in it. Jeanette Iman, Rosalind Browning, Geraldine Simmons. <laughs> uh, that's Geraldine Simmons. Bernice Smith, Mrs. Ella Rawlins, Tilly Foster, Mrs. Harriet Webster. Father, did you go out with married women, too? I didn't ask questions. I just had fun. <laughs> well, the only girl I'm going out with is Mary Livingston. And I think I'll call her up now and ask for a date in Chicago. Why, certainly, Dennis. We'll have dinner together the first night we're in Chicago. And thanks a lot. No, no, you needn't bother coming over here. My sister Babe is helping me pack. Okay. Goodbye. See you at the station. Say, Mary, do you go out with Dennis Day? Oh, once in a while, Babe. I think he has a slight crush on me. Well, I think he's cute. Oh, he is. And he has such a wonderful voice. Yeah. You know, before my voice changed, I was a tenor, too. <laughs> Could be. Well, come on, baby. Let's finish my packing. 
You know, Mary, I can't get over how surprised you were when I came out here to visit you from Plainfield. Well, I just wasn't expecting you, that's all. Gee, when I first telephoned you and said, guess who? You sounded so thrilled. Yeah, I thought you were Charles Boyer. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see. I'll put my cosmetics here, my rouge, lipstick, manicure set, permanent, and perfume. Say, Mary, where did you get this tremendous bottle of perfume? Oh, Jack gave it to me for Christmas. Is it good? It must be. Phil Harris tasted it and said it was swell. <laughs> well, there, I guess I'm all packed. Mary, you left this out. Oh, that's my address book. Do you mind if I look to it? No, go right ahead. Harold Warren, Arthur Cook, Frank Rambley, <laughs> William Carter, <laughs> Geraldine Simmons. Geraldine Simmons? <laughs> Who's she? Well, don't you remember? That's Mama's stage name. Oh, yes. Say, <laughs> Mary, what station are you leaving from? Oh, I think it's the Union Station, but I'll check with John Wilson. He always knows those things. That's right, Mary, the Union Station. You're welcome. Huh? Oh, thanks, but my wife's driving me down. Goodbye. Gee, Donald, I hate to see you go. Oh, I hate to leave you there. The house will seem so empty without you. I know. Hey, <laughs> Donald, dear, please remember all the things I told you. Oh, I remember, dear. I'm to go to bed early. I must wear my long underwear until May 15th. I should take my sulfur and molasses every day, and I shouldn't play cards with strangers. Or Mr. Benny, either. <laughs> and another thing, every night before going to sleep, you must do your exercises. You must bend down and touch your toes 100 times. Oh, boss! Come now! Well, now everything's ready, and we... Baggage in the car. Gee, this packing was some job. Two trunks, four valises, two fortnighters, and... Oh, oh, oh my goodness! Donald, what's the matter? What am I packing for? I'm not even going! Anyway, Jack and the gang must be on their way to the station by now. I'd better get on and see them off. Well, here's the station, Mary. I hope the gang is late. Here, let me help you. Thanks. Say, Jack, who's going to be with you on your stage show at the Chicago Theater? Well, there'll be Phil Harris, Rochester, Marjorie Reynolds, the Sportsman Quartet, and myself. Gee, what an important cast. How are you filling the show? Jack Benny and friends. <laughs> <laughs> now, come on, Mary, let's, um... Oh, boss, boss! Oh, there's Rochester. Rochester, take my bags to the train. Yes, sir. Jack, have you got an upper berth or a lower berth? He's got an upper berth. How do you know? Because I'm going to get there first. <laughs> we'll see about that. Well, why don't you toss for it? Oh, no, we won't. I know what happened the last time I tossed. What happened? He took a quarter out of his pocket, flipped it into the air, caught it in his hand, it slipped through his fingers, hit the floor, rolled under the seat, and while he was looking for it, I had a good night's sleep. <laughs> I never did find it. Yeah, I hope we have the same car today. Now, take care of this luggage. Um, <laughs> come on, Mary, let's go to the station. Huh? Train waiting on track five for Red Eye, Mazuka, and Kukalunga. <laughs> attention, attention, all passengers going to Kukalunga. Please have your passports ready. <laughs> hey, Mary, there's Dennis. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mary. Dennis, what's that tag on your lapel? When I told my mother I was going on a long trip, she tied it on me. Your mother put a tag on your lapel? Let me see it. To whom it may concern. The bearer of this tag is Dennis Day. If lost, mind your own business. <laughs> your mother did the same thing last time, Dennis. She certainly has a wonderful sense of humor. Then why didn't she laugh when I came home? <laughs> I don't know. I'll be right back, kids. I'm going over to validate the ticket. Attention, please. Train leaving on track eight for Glendale, Barstow, and Block Camorra. <laughs> I wonder which ticket window I should go to. I beg your pardon, mister, but are you validating tickets? Oh, what do you think I'm doing with this rubber stamp? Voting for Hoover? <laughs> Look, mister, all I want to do is get these tickets validated. That's all. I'm going to Chicago. Chicago? Where? Yeah. I'm returning in four weeks. I knew there was a catch to it. 
Now, look, mister, I'm going to report you to the station master and uh, see... Pardon me just a moment. I'm in a hurry. Do you mind if I go first? No, no, it's quite all right. And what can I do for you, sir? Well, I'd like to know something. I just heard the train announcer say that the train on track eight now goes to Glendale, Barstow, and Glockamora. That's right. Now, what is it you want to know? How are things in Glockamora? <laughs> Is that little brook still leaping there? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Does it still run down to Donny Cove through Killy Beggs till Terry and till Jim? <laughs> yes, it does. Is that willow tree still weeping there? <laughs> uh huh. Does that lassie with a twinkling eye come smiling by? And does she walk away sad and dreamy there, not to see me there? Yes, yes, she does. <laughs> Good. Give me a ticket to West Los Angeles. <laughs> There's your ticket and have a pleasant trip. Thanks. Hmm. <laughs> to him, he's got to be nice yet. Now, what are you mumbling about? <laughs> Look, mister, all I want you to do is validate my ticket. Oh, that, don't right. be mad at oh, me. Right. Just validate my ticket. <laughs> Give me your ticket. Yes. Parlor car, Pullman, coach. Parlor car, parlor car, cattle car. Wait a minute, you've got a batch of tickets here for the cattle car. Yeah, we're taking Phil Harris's orchestra. <laughs> oh, well, uh, don't forget to spray them with sheep dip. <laughs> now, now, give me those tickets. i got to get back to my gas. Your attention, please. The train leaving on track five will only go to Azusa and Cucamonga. Word has just come from Anaheim that the tracks have been washed out by orange juice. <laughs> Ha! Ah, orange juice. Can you imagine a railroad that would have tracks that are so weak that... Hey, Mary, something must have happened to the loudspeaker. Ladies and gentlemen, please excuse that pause. I was fated by the vice president of the railroad. <laughs> Gee, they do it here, too. Say, <laughs> Jack... Uh, you know what Rochester said about him sleeping in the lower berth? Only if he beats me to it. I'll give you eight to five, he wins. What makes you so sure? He just walked by here in his pajamas. <laughs> well, it won't do him any good. I'll still beat him to the lower berth. Well, you better hurry. He's brushing his teeth at the drinking fountain. Rochester! Good night, boys! Come back! Yeah. <laughs> Blow out that candle. You're not fooling anybody. Now, Rochester, is this the rest of my luggage right here? Yes, sir. Say, Jack. What? What have you got here in this big crate? It's nothing, Mary, nothing. Rochester, get it on the train. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to look and see what's in that crate. Mary, get away from there. Now, Mary, don't lift that lid. I will, too. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. <laughs> Gee, I hope the conductor didn't hear him. Say, fellas, in case anything happens, you know what train we're taking, don't you? Yeah, wait a minute, fellas, yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, Mary, slam down the lid. Mary, you slammed it so hard you might have hurt him. Let me see. I knew it. You shook him up. The bass is in the middle and the tenor is on top. <laughs> Rochester, I've got the lid locked. Now put this crate on the train. Oh, boss, I can't lift that thing. Well, how'd you get it down here? I put eight holes in the bottom and it walked. <laughs> walked? I rode on top and looked like Sabu. Attention, <laughs> please. A bulletin from the lost and found department just came in. Will the owners please claim the following? A Pekingese, an umbrella, and a young man with a tag in his lapel. <laughs> oh, my goodness, that must be Dennis. Mary, you get him. I'll stand in line. Arriving at the lower end of the station, the Lark, El Capitan, the Owl, and coming in on the rail is Jet Pilot. <laughs> Jet Pilot? The Santa Fe chief going to Albuquerque, Kansas City, and Chicago leaves in five minutes. Oh, Martha. Martha, we just made it. Yes. And there's Jack Denny standing in line. Shall we go over and give Mr. Denny the flowers we brought for him? Yes, I guess we're better. You know, Emily, we would never have had the courage to come down here if we hadn't split that bottle of ginger beer. <laughs> You're so right, kid. <laughs> well, we might as well go and give him the flowers. Oh, Mr. Denny. 
Mr. Denny. Huh? Oh, hello, girls. Girls. <laughs> Mr. Benny, we came down to give you this as a going-away gift. Well, what do you know? An orchid. Oh, girl, you shouldn't have gone to this expense. Oh, we didn't buy it. Emily won it at Tom Brenneman. <laughs> well, isn't that nice? Yes, and we want you to have it. Well, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Go ahead, Emily. Ask him. No, you ask him. No, you ask him. Oh, well, all right. Uh, Mr. Benny. Yes? Is this your first orchid? <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Well, you know what that means, Mr. Benny? I'll have to kiss you. A little kiss? <laughs> Why, certainly. <laughs> well, what do you know? I kissed Emily and Martha fainted. <laughs> Gee. Kids, the line is moving. Hurry, Mary. Dinner. Attention, please. All passengers taking the chief to Chicago, please walk on tiptoes as you board the train. Rochester is sleeping. <laughs> He's in that lower berth. There's going to be trouble. Come on, kids. Let's go. So good night, folks. Broadcasting from Chicago, the Lucky Strike program starring Jack Tenney with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and pinch hitting for Don Wilson, Norman Berry. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Norman Berry, and I'm substituting for Don Wilson. It is my job to introduce that scintillating star of stage, screen, and radio. But how can a star of such magnitude be introduced properly by such an insignificant person as I? I would have said me, but I guess uh, insignificant people say I. Uh, continue, Norman. Continue. But I'll try anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Jack Benny. <laughs> thank you, thank you. This is Jack Benny talking. Very hoarsely, of course. I'm doing eight shows a day, you know. And Mr. Barry, or may I call you Norman, I want to congratulate you on being selected as my announcer here in Chicago. Well, seriously, Jack, I want to thank you for the privilege. Oh, don't thank me. After all, I sent questionnaires to every announcer in Chicago. And when I opened yours, I knew you were the man for me. Jack, you mean I answered all 20 questions correctly? Norm, when you answered question number one by saying money isn't everything, I didn't bother reading the rest. <laughs> You were meant for me. <laughs> well, Jack, this is odd, my taking Don Wilson's place. You know, I've known Don for about two years, but I've seen very little of him. Well, don't feel bad, Norm. He's worked for me 14 years, and I haven't seen all of them myself. <laughs> but anyway, Norm, I'm really glad to be back in Chicago. Say, Jack, I know you're appearing on the stage at the Chicago Theater. How is the show coming? Wonderful, now that I've changed it a little bit. You see, on my opening show Friday, I thought of a great gag. I wanted to make sure of a big laugh, so when I made my entrance, I walked out on the stage wearing galoshes, a heavy wool suit, a sweater, mittens, earmuffs, and a big raccoon coat. And did the audience laugh at that? Why should they? With the weather we had, they were dressed the same way. <laughs> Believe me, Norman, if Sally Rand were booked into Chicago this week, she'd have to do her balloon dance with hot water bottles. <laughs> Not bad, is it? There you know, Of course, anything I say now is gravy after those shows. And... But anyway, Norman, I think we have a swell show at the Chicago Theater. A great cast. Bill Harris, Rochester, Marjorie Reynolds, the Sportsman Quartet, and Herman Humpeldinker. Wow. Wait a minute. Who is Herman Humpeldinker? He's that? the guy who runs the spotlight. If I don't mention him, I work in the dark all week. <laughs> Anyway, Norman, it's really a pleasure playing in front of these Chicagoans because you should have seen the welcome I got at the station. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. How are you? Well, Jack, it certainly has been an exciting week, hasn't it? It certainly has, but you don't look any the worse for it, Mary. That's a mighty pretty dress you're wearing. Well, thanks. 
But why have you got those lead weights on the bottom of your skirt? This your first trip to the Windy City, Bob? <laughs> oh, Mary, it isn't so windy here. It isn't, eh? Then why are you wearing those bicycle clips? Because I catch cold easily, that's why. Remember what happened the last time I was in Chicago? I had a cold in my chest. I had a temperature of 99. 99? Jack, you didn't have much of a cold. He hasn't got much of a chest. <laughs> well, we're even. You haven't got much of a joke. Then. <laughs> By the way, Mary, this is Norman Berry. Hello, Norman. Hello, Mary. You know, Norman is taking Don Wilson's place for this week. That reminds me, Jack. I haven't said anything about salary. When you get it, you'll say plenty. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It usually leaves them speechless, you know. But anyway, Norman... Pardon me, Jack. Yeah. See, Mary, I know we've just met and all, but... If you're not doing anything tonight, I'd like to take you around and show you Chicago. Oh, I'd love it. We'll go to the beachcombers, the pump room, the college inn, the trade winds, and the chaperie. Oh, that'll be really swell. Mary, I took you to those very same places last night. I know, but now I'd like to see them from the inside. <laughs> well, I'm sure you and Norman will make a very lovely couple. You know, Mary, just before you came in, you mind if I lean on you a little? <laughs> just before you came in... I started to tell Norman about the welcome I got when I arrived at the station. Oh, that reminds me, Jack. You ever find the suitcase you lost? Not yet, Mary, but they're looking for it. You know? Well, Jack, what about this welcome you got at the station? Norm, it brings tears to my eyes every day I think about it. Why? What happened? They, 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 they threw tear gas. <laughs> Frank, I know we would have missed the next show at the Chicago Theater. <laughs> Such a wonderful joke. <laughs> huh? You nervous? Yeah. I don't know. Well, what do you talk about? One little bomb, she makes a big thing out of it, you know? <laughs> anyway, Norman, 5,000 people met me at the station. I wanted to show them I was in the spirit of the occasion, so I suggested that I lead them in a conga line. And, Norman, it was wonderful. One single line, two miles long. One, two, three, kick. One, two, three, kick. A conga line two miles long, for heaven's sake, Jack. Where did they lead them? Right to the box office of the Chicago Theater. <laughs> well, it was just a coincidence. Anyway, I'm not surprised that they love me so much in Chicago. After all, it's so close to my hometown in Waukegan. Say, Norm, what do the people here in Chicago think of Waukegan? Well, you know how it is, Mary. Every state has to have its cucamonga. <laughs> Now, wait a minute, Norman. Wonder, uh, Waukegan is a wonderful town. I'm not saying that just because I own... I mean, because I'm their favorite son. But only three weeks ago, Waukegan named the street after me. Gunny Boulevard? No, Shlemiel Parkway. <laughs> Mary, it's not Parkway, it's Avenue. <laughs> Shlemiel Avenue. <laughs> you can't say nice things about me. Make something up. After all, you don't... don't... Come in! Mr. Benny, I'm from the Lost and Found Department of the Santa Fe Railroad. You're also one of my writers. Good, but I'm glad you got here. I haven't been able to sleep for three days. Give me that suitcase. Not yet, bud. you got to identify the contents. Well, there's a white shirt, blue shorts, a green dressing gown, brown shoes. Now, give me the bag. Wait a minute. What color is the teddy bear? <laughs> it's not a teddy bear. It's a panda. Now, oh. give me that bag. All right, but I'm afraid you're going to be cold here in Chicago. Why? When I opened your suitcase, I ripped the panels off your flannels. Oh, get out of here, will you? Jack, why do you always bring that panda on trips with you? Because most hotel rooms have twin beds, and I hate to sleep alone. Anyway, I think that they... <laughs> what are you laughing at, Mary? Oh, let's forget the time the hotel detective knocked on Jack's door and the panda jumped out the window. <laughs> Stop making things up. Every time we oh, come... Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. How are you? <laughs> hey, Dennis, do you notice we have a new announcer? <whistles> That's Mary, the other one. Of the <laughs> oh. Uh, Dennis, shake hands with Norman Barry. Hello, Dennis. Hello. Mr. Benny, what happened to John Wilson? Oh, we had to leave him at home. Gee, I'm not surprised. The last time I saw him, he was in the drugstore and he was having trouble with his stomach. Trouble with the stomach? Yeah, he couldn't get it in the phone booth. <laughs> what? He barely got it in the drugstore. Dennis, stop being so silly. Tell me, where are you living? Oh, I didn't get a room yet. You didn't get a hotel room yet? Where'd you go when you got off the train? Oh, some jerk started a conga line and I wound up in the Chicago Theater. <laughs> oh. Oh, 
One, two, three, kick. One, two, three, kick. Never mind, never mind. Norman, you saw my stage show. How did you like it? Well, I couldn't see very well. I sat in back of a fat man. Well, I couldn't see either, Jack. The man in front of me was too tall. Oh, I could see swell. I sat behind a man with a hole in his head. <laughs> oh, for I don't know where you get those wild ideas, sitting behind a man with a hole in his head. Now, go and do your song. Okay, hold my bracing bit. Now, cut that out. <laughs> Come on, let's have your song, Dennis, will you? That was Little Mother of Mine, sung by Phil Harris. I mean, Dennis Day. Gee, I'm sorry, you, folks, if Clem McCarthy can make a mistake, so can I. <laughs> At least I know Jet Pilot wasn't singing. That I know. <laughs> Dennis, it was swell. Well, huh? thanks. Say, Mr. Benny, can I leave now? I've got a lot of things to do. First, I want to make sure the hotel got me a room with twin beds. Dennis, you're all by yourself. Why do you need a room with twin beds? I've got two shows. Oh, oh. <laughs> Well, Dennis, how do you like it here in Chicago? Oh, it's swell. It's different from the last time I was here. You know, I heard about their new subway, so I tried it out yesterday. Pretty good, isn't it, Dennis? Yeah, but it took me a long time to get from one station to the other. A long time? Why, did something happen to the train? Oh, train! <laughs> That brazen bit. I just want to look in his head and see what goes on in there. That's all. <laughs> Say, Mr. Benny, do you think you can get me a pass so I can see your show again? Well, I don't know, Dennis. I don't want to ask the manager for any favors. I had a little argument with him. Oh, Jack, you always have trouble. Well, this time it wasn't my fault. You ought to see the crummy dressing room they gave me. Looks terrible with those pipes running across the ceiling. But, Jack, lots of rooms have pipes running through them. Sewer pipes? <laughs> Those kids, I wish they'd stop lifting that manhole cover and asking me for my autograph. Jack, what picture is playing with you at the theater? It's called Easy Come, Easy Go. Oh. <laughs> Remember when they played the horn blows at midnight here? Yeah, yeah. That's the week they had the sign in the box office. Please help yourself. The cashier hasn't got the heart to sell them. <laughs> stop kidding, will you? That picture did them. Oh, say, Mary, will you do me... Would you do me a favor and, uh... Hiya, Jackson. Hi, kid. Hello, Phil. Yeah. Lay it on me. Oh, lay it on me. Make me know it, you pretty dumb, dude. That's what I love about Chicago, Jackson. There he is, folks. Hollywood's answer to Swift and Armor. Yeah, it's tenderized, too. Well, I'm glad you admit it, Phil. Oh, brother, you're the most conceited guy I've ever seen. Now, wait a minute, Jackson. I ain't so conceited. Renata, you were the inspiration for that song, Aren't You Glad You're You. Oh, uh, Jack, stop picking on Phil. I think he's a change man. Oh, sure, sure. Well, yesterday I saw him pour 38 cases of bourbon in the lake. Phil, you did that? I mean, have you given up drinking? No, but the breeze comes from the lake, and I like to sleep with my window open. <laughs> oh, so that explains it. Explains what? This morning I got up, opened the window, took my deep breathing exercises, and fell flat on my face. <laughs> anyway, fool. I mean, Phil. Don't you ever think of, fi of the finer things in life? Are you kidding? I'm married to one of them. <laughs> Besides her. Oh. I mean, artistic things like, well, like museums and art galleries. You know, where you can see paintings and masterpieces. Look, Jackson, I know all about these paintings and all those great artists. This may surprise you, but I do a little painting myself. You do? Certainly. Well, tell me, Phil, there are a lot of great artists like Van Gogh, Picasso, Cezanne, Matisse. I mean, when you paint, whose style do you follow? Rembrandt. <laughs> Rembrandt. Phil, that's Rembrandt. You mix your paint and I'll mix mine. <laughs> Let's, let's cut out all this nonsense, get serious for a minute. After all, today is Mother's Day. You're right, Jack. And this morning I sent my mother a big box of candy with a card saying, Happy Mother's Day. That was very sweet, Mary. I sent my mother a big bouquet of flowers and a card on it that said, Gesundheit. <laughs> Gesundheit? She's got hay fever. <laughs> oh, oh. Mother's Day is nothing to sneeze at. Dana, stop that. <laughs> Can't we be serious for one minute? Oh, say, Jack. Yes, Norman. Since I'm pinch hitting for Don Wilson today, I took the liberty of rehearsing your quartet in a number that I'm sure you'll like to hear, especially today. My quartet? <laughs> well, Norman, what's this number they've been rehearsing for oh, today? Very, very good. Take it, fellas.
fellas, get back in your crate. <laughs> hey, Jackson, uh, did you straighten out your beef with Mr. Platt, the manager of the theater? No, I'm expecting him to call, and when he does, I'll tell him plenty. Imagine him giving me a scintillating star a dressing room like that. Well, Jack, what are you complaining about? Why, when Fred Allen played the Chicago Theater, he was happy in that room. You mean Fred Allen was in the, that same dressing room? Yes. All the time I've been blaming the stockyard. <laughs> You know, they're very careless backstage. Uh, during the last show, while I was doing my monologue, a heavy sandbag fell from the rafters and missed me by three inches. Only three inches. I can't understand it. Neither can I. That stage hand used to be a bombardier. <laughs> yeah. You know, I ought to do something about that. Hey, uh, well, uh, excuse me a minute. Uh, I want to see my musicians about that song that Al Jolson is going to do on the program next week. I'll be oh, back. Okay, Phil, go right ahead. Hey, Mr. Benny, are you really going to have Al Jolson as your guest star next week? That's right. Al Jolson is going to be on our program. Gee, I like him. You do, kid? Yeah, especially when he sings. Oh, and April showers may come your way. They bring up the hours on them. All right, Dennis. That, that, that should be done easy. Oh, mammy, mammy, I'm coming to well, you. But Dennis, we don't need that. Dennis. Dennis, look at I signed a contract with Jolson for $5,000. Now I find out Dennis can do it. <laughs> they won't even pay me that much when I open at the Roxy Theater in New York. Yes, folks, the Roxy Theater on Wednesday, the 21st of May. Anybody wishing a Well, I'm glad you got into it. <laughs> Mary starts any place. You know, when she feels like talking, she talks. <laughs> Anybody wishing a free pass to see Jack Benny at the Rossi. Just right. Why I like Jack Benny on, on a $10, $10 bill, bill and send, and send it, it in. in. Very good. <laughs> Look, Mary, don't be so silly. Come in. Hello, Jack. May I come in? Oh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Marjorie Reynolds. Oh, Margie, I thought you were swell in Jack's stage show. Well, thank you, Mary. Yes, Marjorie, you're terrific. Do you want to see me about something? Oh, yes, Jack. Uh, when we do that long kissing scene, I wish you wouldn't wear your thick glasses. Not wear my glasses? Why? In the last show, the spotlight hit them and burned a hole in my dress. <laughs> oh, I'll tell Herman Humpeldinker to watch that. <laughs> and another thing, Jack, what? if you insist on putting your arms around me when you kiss me, do you mind if I don't wear that backless evening gown? Oh, you found out about old clammy hands. <laughs> Mary, Marjorie, you wear your backless evening gown. It looks better. I'll wear gloves. And another thing, Marjorie, <laughs> I'm sure that my kiss will be much better from now on. You see, the first show, I was a little bit nervous. Nervous? Yeah, I put the lipstick on my violin bow and the rosin on my lips. <laughs> a natural mistake, you know. <laughs> Typhus couldn't have kissed better. Marjorie, there's one thing, though, one other thing I want to talk to you about the stage show. When you finish the act, why do you just bow to me and then go over and kiss all the musicians? This is Petrillo's hometown. Oh! <laughs> now forget, sister, I've got a union card. Huh? Say, Marjorie, sometime this week, why don't you do one of those songs you did in that picture, Holiday Inn? Yeah, that's a good idea. You know, Marjorie, you were wonderful in those numbers with Bing Crosby. Well, I enjoyed making that picture. Bing is wonderful. He, he's so unpredictable. You never know what he's going to say next. I know. I had him on my program. <laughs> well, Crosby is really a great guy. In fact, I... Hey, think... Jackson, if it's okay with you, do you mind if I run along and... Ouch, you beautiful blonde creature, you... <laughs> Me? Oh, yes. Yeah. Bill, Bill, stop staring oh, at Oh, hubba, 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 and eccentric, eccentric. <laughs> That's et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Now, Phil, you've been so busy, I haven't had a chance to introduce you formally. This is Marjorie Reynolds. Oh, brother, now I know what they mean by the Reynolds bombshell. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Harris. Hey, look, baby, call me Phil. We can save an hour that way. <laughs> Phil, don't be so... Jack, low. why don't you just sit back and take notes? Mary, I... <laughs> Mary, I need Phil's help like a moose needs a hat rack. Believe me. <laughs> Can't understand it. Doesn't get a laugh. Norman Krasner loves that joke. Never gets a laugh. Hey, you know something, Margie? When I seen you in Holiday Inn with Bing Crosby and Fred Astaire, I knew you had possibilities. Oh, thank you. It was nice working with Fred and Bing. They're both so talented. Yeah. I know what you mean. I got a little of both of them in me. <laughs> Phil, why don't you go jump in Lake Shapiro? <laughs> hey, there's the phone. 
supposed to ring now, anyway. <laughs> ling a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling. I'll get it. Hello. Hello, Mr. Berry. This is Roger. I knew the phone was the phone. Rochester can do nine shows a day. With his voice, you can't tell the difference. <laughs> Rochester, where have you been? I expected to hear from you an hour ago. I'm sorry, boss, but I ran into a little trouble. We ain't living at the Ambassador Hotel anymore. Why not? Uh, no, the manager made me take the trailer out of the lobby. <laughs> Gee, we brought it all the way from the coast on the back of the chief. Don't worry, boss. I got everything fixed. I moved the trailer to a much better location, and what a beautiful view. Good, good. Where'd you move the trailer to? To the grandstand of the Sportsman's Park. <laughs> oh, fine, a racetrack. I'm going to love that. Well, uh, I've been kind of thinking it over, boss, and uh, maybe it would be better if you got yourself a hotel room. Why, what about my trailer? I lost that in the fifth race. <laughs> Oh, stop being funny. Did you get me all the things I wanted for my stage show? You know, my makeup? Uh-huh. You sure you got me everything? My lipstick, eyebrow pencil, powder, mascara, rouge, and eyeshadow? Yes, sir. And, boss, you certainly do a wonderful job with your makeup. You think so? Yeah. Only an expert can tell where you end and Lady Esther begins. <laughs> Rochester, don't worry about my makeup. You don't look so hot on that stage with the outfit you've been wearing. Green pants, yellow shoes, red socks, purple shirt, and a pink tie. My trunk didn't come, so I had to wear my street clothes. <laughs> no. I'm going to hang up now, boss, and if you're smart, you'll hurry over to the theater and do your stage show right away. Why? Well, uh, the, the house is packed and the people are in a jovial mood. They're in high spirits, laughing, happy, singing. It's just like New Year's Eve. Gee, what happened? I opened the side door and there's a 90 proof breeze coming in from the lake. <laughs> well, keep the door open. I'll be right over. Come on, Phil. We better get there before the wind changes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be playing here at the Chicago Theater until Friday. Next Sunday, we'll be broadcasting to you from New York City. And a week from Wednesday, we'll be opening at the Roxy Theater, New York. Say, Mary, you've seen the stage show a couple of times. What do you think of it? Well, it's a great show if you start playing your violin. What's wrong with my violin playing? You hold your bow too close to the strings. But, Mary, wait a minute. If the bow doesn't touch the strings, you wouldn't be able to hear it. Don't be so smart. (laughs) Good night, folks. from New York City, the Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and filling in for little old fatty Don Wilson is yours truly, Kenny Delmar. Ladies and gentlemen, it has often been said that it takes brains to make money. I don't want to start an argument, but here's the star of our show, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you. Hello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And Kenny Delmar, you can save those introductions for Fred Allen. You know, you don't have to... Kenny. Kenny, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Kenny, look at me. I'm sorry, Jack. When I hear the name Fred Allen, I instinctively bow my head. <laughs> well, Kenny, if you bow your head low enough, you might see his hooper. <laughs> Imagine making people bow to him. Of course, I haven't been in New York a long time. Well, Jack, the the last time you were in New York and you met Fred Allen, you bowed. Kenny, I wasn't bowing. I just couldn't look at that face. (laughs) What a homely guy. I've never seen a guy. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jack. Fred isn't so homely. He isn't, eh? Allen's face has so many wrinkles, when he gets a shave, the barber has to use a bookmark. The only time Alan's face isn't out of place is during the baseball season. The baseball season? Yeah, with those bags under his eyes, his nose looks like it's caught between second and third. (laughs) And the rest of them should be sent to the showers. Believe me. Well, Jack, I I didn't want to mention this, but since you're talking about Alan, I think it's only fair that I tell you something. What? Well, Fred said that you've got so much money that you have no more places to keep it. Uh Uh-huh. So any money you make from now on, you're going to have melted down and shot into your arm. (laughs) 
Well, it's a good idea. It'll give me all my vitamins. M O N E and Y. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Hi. I haven't seen you since we got off the train. Where have you been? Well, I went right from the station to New Jersey to visit my mother. Your mother, eh? Well, how is the duck-billed platypus of Plainfield? Jack, please. I don't know. They told me that's a local joke here, is it? (laughs) Everybody told me if I say it, they'll scream at it. Mama doesn't look like that. I'm sorry, ma'am. Maybe if she went to a beauty parlor, she could, you know. How's your sister, babe? I hope she's not running around with that guy she wrote you about, the undertaker. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. He's a nice fellow, and he's very sporty. He's yeah. the only undertaker in Plainfield who has a convertible hearse. <laughs> convertible hearse? That's a good idea. Get a little brown before they lower you down. <laughs> Your sister really picked him, doesn't she? Yeah, but Dave is thinking of giving him up because he's always got his mind on his work. What do you mean, kid? Well, one day she went riding with him without her makeup on, and he drove her straight to the cemetery. Yeah, that babe was frightened, wasn't he? You're not kidding. He almost finished the eulogy before she punched him in the nose. So why did she stop him sooner? Those are the first nice things he ever said about her. I see. Well, is babe still in Plainfield? Oh, no, no. She came back to New York with me. In fact, she's sitting in the audience right now. Where? Right in the third row. The girl with the marble hat. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Look at what it says. Babe Livingston, please keep off the grass. <laughs> oh, by the way, Mary, I want you to meet Kenny Delmar. He's our announcer today. Kenny Delmar? Why, Jack, you took him right off the Fred Allen show. No, no, Mary, not right off the Allen show. I sprayed him first. <laughs> you know, I'd like to see Allen's face next Wednesday when he sees my name in lights at the Roxy Theater. You know, he got sick when he heard about the business we did in Chicago. Uh, Jack, I understand that it's the first time in the history of the Chicago theater that it's passed the $100,000 mark for any week. How much did you get out of it? Well, I... I hate to brag, Kenny. I, you tell him, Maria. Well, in setting the new racket, record... Jack... Racket? The new one? <laughs> Leave it in. It's good. <laughs> you know, it was a new racket... <laughs> the line again, Mary. It's too good to lose. Okay. Well, in setting the new record, Jack took in $113,000 for the week. $113,000? Yes, but of course he had to pay Phil, Rochester, Marjorie Reynolds, and the quartet. That left him $112,000. Yes. Then he paid his income tax, and that left him $1.65. Uh-huh. Which he owes me for doing his laundry. I would have done it myself, but I didn't want to open it at the Roxy with red hands. So you see, Kenny, you know, you have to wait here a little longer than Los Angeles. I'm getting used to it now. It's okay, folks, you can wipe off that frown, because here comes Harris, the toast of the town. Oh, fine, the toast of the town, rye toast, 90 proof rye. Say, Phil, are you having a good time here in New York? Oh, wonderful, Livy, wonderful. What a combination. Me in New York. Me, the world's greatest entertainer in the world's greatest city. Phil, how can you say such a thing? Why, ain't New York the world's greatest city? Jack, put down that knife. You've only got one more show. All right, I guess I can stand it if you can. Ah, New York, Jackson. Gee, it's great to be back here. What a city. What sight. The Empire State Building, Fifth Avenue, Central Park, and Mayor LaGuardia. (laughs) Phil... Phil, look at it. Come here. Soapbox head. <laughs> what a... Look at I got news for you. LaGuardia isn't mayor of New York anymore. He's out of office. Well, how do you like that happy Chandler? First DeRosha, now LaGuardia. <laughs> You take him, will you? Okay. Say, Phil, what have you been doing in town? Seen any shows? Yeah, I went to see a show last night. It was all about Jackson. Wait a minute, Phil. A show about me? What was the name of it? Call Me Miser. <laughs> That's Mr. Call Me Mr. Okay, Mr. Miser. All right. Cut that out. Okay, okay. Don't get sore about it. I was only... Hey! Hey, ain't that Kenny Delmar? Hello, Felsey boy. Hiya, Kenny. Good to see you again. Oh, you know Kenny? Why, circular son. Met him last summer. Joe, now there. <laughs> yeah, Jack, it was when Phil was a guest on Fred's program. 
Oh, I didn't know that Phil was a guest on Alan's show. He was, and very good, too. Kenny. Kenny, tell me something. What? Did he, uh... Did he sing it? Yeah. All 50 chords. <laughs> So how he has the nerve to come up and... Excuse me. Hello? Oh, Mr. Bennett, it's Rochester. Rochester, where have you been? I expected you to call me yesterday from Grand Central Station. I got off at 125th Street. <laughs> 125th Street? Well, you were certainly anxious to get to Harlem. Anxious? I start dragging one foot at Albany. <laughs> But Rochester, how could you get off? The train doesn't stop at 125th Street. I found that out, so I pulled the emergency cord. <laughs> the emergency cord? Did that stop the train fast? Did it. The diner came in the Grand Central Station piggyback. <laughs> oh, stop that. Why is it every time we go to New York, you rush to Harlem? Well, I had to go there yesterday. It was a big holiday. Everybody was drinking toast to each other and throwing confetti out the window and dancing in the street. Gee, what holiday was it? Boys, we were having so much fun, we forgot to name it. <laughs> That's what I thought. Well, look, Rochester, we can't talk anymore because I got to do my show. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, Rochester. Yes, sir. I got some more, I got some work for you to do tomorrow. I can't tomorrow. There's another holiday coming up. <laughs> Never mind that now. I want you to go over to my hotel and press my gray suit. I'm going to wear it Wednesday when I open at the Roxy. But, well, boss, that gray suit doesn't give enough contact with your golden curly locks. Well, Rochester, what can I do? I don't have any other suit. I know, but you've got other hair. <laughs> Not anymore. Chicago was windier than I thought. <laughs> I'll see you at my hotel. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Happy birthday. It's not my birthday. It's too late now. My friends are drinking to it. <laughs> oh, hang up. Goodbye. That guy drives me nuts. <laughs> Well, kids, let's get on with the show because, you know, Al Jolson's going to be our guest star. Well, how come he hasn't arrived yet? Well, Mary told me he was driving over here and there's a lot of traffic and, I don't know, maybe Al isn't a very good driver. Hey, Jackson, maybe you don't like the way Al Jolson drives, but have you ever seen the way Larry parts? <laughs> You may not be Guy Lombardo, but you're the sweetest thing this side of heaven. Isn't that awful? That was my last nine, uh, my last line, Mother. You can turn it off now. <laughs> Bill, come back here. If you miss another one, it's going to be your last line. <laughs> Imagine telling your mother to turn off the radio. That's terrible. Don't you worry, Jackson. Mom knows enough to turn it back on for the Fitch bandwagon. Oh, brother. Now. I've heard everything. You ain't heard nothing yet. Why is that? Al Jolson. Hey, Al, what took you so long getting here? Well, you know how it is, Jack. I drove over and there's an awful lot of traffic. Oh, yes, I remember now. And you're not such a good driver. Say, listen, maybe you don't like the way I drive. But have you ever seen the way Larry parks? <laughs> I got a gag here. I got a gag here. No, no, Al, turn the page. Oh. Turn the page. <laughs> Al, Phil just did that joke. What's, what's the difference? You get a million new listeners when I come on. <laughs> I know, Al, I know. That's why it's nice having you on my show. Well, it's nice being with you, Jack. But, gee, Al, you've been making so many guest star appearances. I, I can't understand why you work so hard. Well, Jack, weren't you ambitious when you were my age? <laughs> Your age? Yeah. How old are you? 38. <laughs> Gee, we all seem to get stuck there. <laughs> but Al, seriously, you shouldn't work so hard. Don't you realize that life was made to be lived and enjoyed? See, you gotta live leisurely, enjoy the finer things in life. You shouldn't be a slave, a man to his bank account. Remember, money isn't everything. Don't applaud, folks. You might wake him up. Mary. Well, hello, you. Al, this is Mary Livingston. Hello, Al. Mary. What a beautiful name. And what a beautiful girl to go with it. Oh, Al. I didn't think you were still interested in girls. Listen, honey, baby. Let me tell you something. 
A man never gets too old to be interested in girls. <laughs> I say that's the best news I've heard today. <laughs> Please. Huh? Wait a minute. Aren't you Phil Harris? Yes, sir. That's me. How do you like that? He admits it yet. <laughs> Nothing bothers him. Now, Mary, Phil, please sit down. You know, Al, it's hard to think of any two fellas in show business who have as much in common as we two. You're right, Jack. And that goes for radio, vaudeville, Broadway shows, and the movies. Yeah, take movies, for instance. We both worked for Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. You made Sunny Boy, which was nearly their first talkie. And you made The Horn Blows at Midnight, which was nearly their last one. <laughs> you like that? Huh? Yeah, Jack, I, I mean, I mean, I apologize. I mean, it was one of the more recent ones. No, I mean, I mean. Yeah, I mean, sure, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, look, oh, it's amazing, though, Al, how our careers are so closely associated. I think so. I mean, few people realize, <laughs> few people realize that you were the very first man to encourage me and help me up the ladder of success. Huh? I remember it clearly. It was in 1922. 1922. I wasn't working. You were a big-time star. And you met me and you slapped me on the back and said, Son... Don't worry, you'll make good. And then you gave me a dollar to get a meal. That was 25 years ago. How about giving it back? <laughs> well, I didn't return that dollar because I thought it was a good luck omen. And I decided to pass it on to some other poor struggling actor who might need encouragement. Well, I'm glad you didn't keep the dollar. Tell me, Jack, who'd you give it to? Well, first I had my eye on a nice young kid named Eddie Cantor. Now, he was, he was very talented. Look, I just came here to sing. Don't antagonize me. Oh. So he gave the dollar to Eddie Cantor. Well, you see, at that time, Eddie Cantor was engaged to marry a girl named Ida. But by the time I decided to give him the dollar... He had a wife and five kids. I don't know. Only three. All right, Jack. Who did you finally give that dollar to? Well, you've heard of Bing Crosby, haven't you? Heard of him. We go around together on the same turntables. <laughs> Anyway, well, what happened with Crosby? Well, I noticed he looked hungry, so I walked up to him, slapped him on the back, and said, Kid, how about a dollar? And he gave it to me. <laughs> anyway, Al, I didn't know where to turn next. But, Jack, there were other struggling youngsters who could have used that lucky dollar. Fellas like Danny Kaye, Bob Hope, Ronald Coleman, Hugo Carmichael, <laughs> Jimmy Durante, Daryl Zanuck, Todd Gable, and Manesha Skolnick. Manesha Skolnick? Yeah, he's a star of Finkelstein's Rainbow. You know that show. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, all those actors seem to struggle to the top without my help. And so yeah. against my finer instincts, I kept your lucky dollar. And now it'll always be with me. I know. You had it melted down and shot in your arm. Yeah. <laughs> well, Al is getting on towards the end of the program, and I was wondering, well, perhaps you'd like to sing a song. You know, folks, this kid doesn't listen to radio much. Oh, well, you would like to sing, yes? Eh? Well, certainly. That's why I brought my music over. Here, look at it. Well, this is a swell song. Come on, Al, let's hear it. Okay, but who'll accompany me? Phil Harris's orchestra. Give me back my music. What? Hey, wait a minute, Julie. I heard that remark, and I don't like anyone casting aspirins at my band. That's a person. For his band is aspirins. I Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, what's wrong with my band? What's wrong? Hoo, 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 hoo. Come on, come on. Come on, what's wrong with my band? Oh, Phil, don't be so sensitive. Well, I don't care. Everyone who comes on this show has to insult my band, and I'm not going to stand for it anymore. I won't, Alice. I won't. I'm just not going to stand for it anymore. Yeah, I don't okay. have to stand for it. Ah, uh, you've heard Phil's feelings. Say something nice to him. Something nice? Yeah. <laughs> Bourbon. Thanks, pal. Well, stop kissing him. Come on, Al. Everybody's waiting to hear you sing, yeah? Okay, Jackson, stand back. Al, that was one. Let's throw the script away and have another song. Okay, Jack. What the... Uh... Gentlemen, I want to thank Kenny Delmar and Al Jolson for appearing on my program tonight. Al, you sang great, and thanks very much. Thanks, Jack, but how about my check? Look, you just came over to sing Don't Antagonize Me. <laughs> huh? 
Ladies and gentlemen, on Wednesday we'll be opening at the Roxy Theater here in New York. Next Sunday will be our last broadcast of the season when Dennis Day will be back with us and our guest star will be America's greatest pause for station identification, Fred Allen. <laughs> Say, Jolie, will you excuse me a minute? I promised I'd drop in next door on the Phil Harris program. They might need me over there. Jack, they need you like a moose needs a hat rack. <laughs> Hey, you heard that on my program. No, it was some fellow named Norman Krasner told it to me. Oh, yes, yes, he loves it. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, the Sportsman's Quartet, and yours truly, Rochester Van Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, it isn't usually my place to introduce the star of our show, but today it's worth five dollars to me, so here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and folks, Rochester, you can go now. But, boss, don't you want me to stay here and do some jokes like Don Wilson? <laughs> no, no, Rochester. See, you're not fat enough. Well, $5 introduction ain't gonna make me no Sidney Green Street. <laughs> Roger, are you dissatisfied with our financial agreement? Well... Look, if you're unhappy, you know my policy. Anybody that works for me can talk to me about anything at any time. I know, but as soon as anybody mentions money, you turn down the volume on your hearing aid. <laughs> What? Last time I asked for a raise, you faded me for 25 seconds. I didn't fade you. It was done by my vice president in charge of finances. But anyway, this is the last time. This program is starting out like Fred Allen's. And anyway, this is the last time I'm going to use you as an announcer. Your voice is too hoarse and rough. Oh, it ain't my fault, boss. My vice, my voice was nice and smooth. Your My voice. Oh, I said my vice. I didn't know what to do. You know, my voice was nice and smooth till I had my appendix taken out. Appendix? What's your appendix got to do with your voice? Long vocal cords. <laughs> well, I guess I've gotten as much out of that five dollars as I can. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Well, Jack, here it is, the last program of the season. That's right, Mary, and boy, am I glad, too. I need a vacation. Oh, Jack, you haven't been working so hard. You don't need a vacation. I do, too. But anyway, Mary, since this is the last show... How about give me a big kiss? Okay. Come on. <laughs> hey, how was that? You're right, Jack. You need a vacation. <laughs> Wait a minute, sister. You may not think I'm good, but in my act at the Roxy, I do a kissing scene with Marjorie Reynolds, and she loves it. Especially when I put my arms around her. Yes, I know. Marjorie told me about that, and she wants me to ask you something. What? <laughs> well, Marjorie wants to know if you... <laughs> what, Mary? Well, Marjorie wants to know if... <laughs> Marjorie wants to know what? Well, she wants to know if you used to wrestle with alligators for a living. <laughs> oh, stop. Anyway, Mary, I'll miss you this summer. But I'll be looking forward to next fall when we'll all be together again. Oh, do you want me back on your program next season, Jack? I certainly do. Well, then I'd like to talk to you about an increase in salary. Go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Testing. One, two, three, now four. Now cut that out. <laughs> you know, sometimes you carry a thing too far. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Livy. I'm looking at the world through rose-colored eyes. <laughs> Hello, Phil. Phil, yeah, what are you so happy about? Well, gee whiz, Jackson, why shouldn't I be happy? Last Sunday, I made radio history. I was on three shows. Three shows? Yeah, sure. I was on your show, I was on my own show, and I was on Fred Allen's show. The only one who missed me was Edgar Bergen. <laughs> Bergen doesn't need you. He's got Mortimer Snurd. <laughs> and compared to you, Mortimer Snurd is a doctor of philosophy. <laughs> well, I'm glad you told me, Jackson. If I ever catch philosophy, I'll give him a buzz. Yes, yeah, do that, do that. But, Phil, doing three shows a day must be an awful strain. And after all, what's more important, money or your health? Money or your health? Well, um... Hey, what do you think, Jackson? She's asking you. <laughs> and anyway, Phil, why do you have to go around trying to make more money? Because you don't pay us enough. What? Sure, that's why Dennis Day had to get another show. That's why I had to get another show. And that's why Don Wilson has got four shows. What about Mary? She's only got one show. Yeah, and look how thin she is. <laughs> Don't blame me for a tight girdle, will you? Now, wait a minute. 
minute, Jack. What I wear has nothing to do oh, with... Hello, Miss Livingston. Oh, hello, Dennis. Gee, it's good to see you all again. How are you feeling, Mr. Benny? Well, I... How are you doing at the Roxy Theater? Oh, business is... Did you have pre- a nice trip from Chicago? <laughs> it was pretty good. Did you good. really break the box office record there? Well, I... Gee, it's our last show and he won't even talk to me. <laughs> Dennis, I will talk to you if you'll only give me a chance. Now, what have you been doing since you've been in New York? How are you, Miss Livingston? Dennis, I asked you something. I mean, what have you been doing in New York? Oh, I went to see some shows and visited relatives. Oh, what shows did you see? I couldn't get in. Well, how were your relatives? I don't know. They were at the shows. What are you talking about? Say, Dennis, I didn't know you had relatives in New York. I don't. They live in Newark, New Jersey. So last night I rented a car and drove under the Hudson River and it was awfully damp. Gee, did I get wet. Wet? Why, was there a leak in the tunnel? Oh, tunnel! <laughs> that Come on, Dennis, let's have your call. Okay. That was I Can't Get Up the Nerve to Kiss You, sung by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis. Thanks. Oh, say, Mr. Benny, I meant to ask you, how's Mr. Allen? Who? Fred Allen. Well, kid, it was nice seeing you again. <laughs> No, no, Phil. In fact, I'm glad he brought it up. But Dennis, I'm happy to tell you that Fred Allen has the same old program, the same old jokes, the same Oh, o- wait a minute, Jack. That's not fair. I've heard all of Fred's programs. They've been very funny. Mary, I wouldn't mind if his jokes just laid there. But they crawl out of the radio and stain your rug. <laughs> Some program. That just shows what you know, Jackson. I think the funniest thing in radio is Allen's Alley. Oh, you do, eh? Yeah, I think so, too. Oh, you do, eh? I think Mr. Benny is much funnier than Mr. Allen. I think so, too. <laughs> huh? You do, eh? Yes, I do. And what's so great about Allen's Alley? Anybody with half an ounce of talent can do that. Oh, yeah? I'd like to see you do it. Well, I'll just show you, sister. Phil, get your band ready while I put this clothespin on my nose. I'll sound like Fred Allen. Now, I'll go down to the alley, and you kids will play the parts of the people that live there. Okay, Phil, music. <laughs> So, Kenny Delmar, I won't say it's been raining here in New York, but last night... Oh, Mr. Allen! Mr. Allen! Well, well, if it isn't Cleveland. (laughs) Gee whiz. Cleveland, Kenny and I were just discussing the rains we've been having here in New York. Well, Mama says that all the rain here in New York was caused by Al Jolson. Al Jolson? (laughs) Yes. He was singing April showers and had two claws left over. Oh. And Mama also said... I don't know. You write this stuff on Thursday, it's raining, then on Sunday the sun shines and you're dead. Now, what else is new with your mother, Cleveland? Well, Mama says that from now on she's going to stop wearing slacks. Stop wearing slacks? Why? A policeman gave her a ticket for pulling a trailer without a license. Oh, 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 oh. Well, so much for your mother and her homegrown bus. We've got to get down to Benny's Boulevard. What is your What is your question for tonight? Our question is, is Fred Allen or Jack Benny the better comedian? Shall we leave? As one of my eyes said to the other, let's pack our bags and go. <laughs> to be back in Allen's Alley, Cleveland. And I see Senator Harris is home. There's a ten-gallon hat and a five-gallon jug on the porch. Let's knock on the bunghole and see what he's got to say. Somebody, I say somebody knock. Yes. Harris I... is the name. Senator Harris, that is. I'm from the West. From the West, When eh? I'm east of the Mississippi River, I'm in enemy territory. Look, Senator. I hate the east. My favorite actress is Mae West. Look, No I... man living can make me see East Lynn. All I never right. go out of the house on Easter Sunday. Senator. When I bake bread, I won't use yeast. That's yeast. I thought that'd get a rise out of you. Now, look, Senator, if, if you... Speak just... up, son. What you got on your mind? Just a free country. Well, I never trying. saw anyone like you, son. Your mouth wide open, but your tongue's just laying there. <laughs> You're tired, eh? Well, Senator, the question tonight is, who is the better comedian? 
Fred Allen or Jack Benny. I brought I say I brought it up in the Senate. Now watch this one, son. It's tricky. <laughs> I brought it up in the Senate and it made Senator Tidings glad. <laughs> glad Tidings. That's a pun, son. I heard it. That's an anecdote, you nanny goat. Now, wait a minute. Just tell me which comedian you like better, Alan or Benny. Where's Alan from? Boston. How about Benny? He's from Waukegan. Waukegan's west of Boston, ain't it? Yeah. Benny's the one. So long, son. So long. So long. So long. So long, Benny. Where's that song? Always late. Late, Well, I suppose the senator's gone back to his newspaper. Spends all night reading Westbrook Pegler. I wonder if Titus Day is at his home. Always so moody. Howdy, bub. (laughs) Well, well, Mr. Day, I see you're at home. Yep, day in and day out, days in. (laughs) Yeah, but you're saying your eyes look all red. Been crying, Bob, reading a sad book. What's the title of it? Forever Amber. But Titus, Forever Amber isn't a sad book. Tis when you're my age, Bob. Oh, I see. Well, I have a very important question to ask you tonight. Uh, who do you think is the better comedian? Fred Allen or Jack Benny? Well, I never hear them myself. When they come on, I put my radio out in the hen house. In the hen house? Why? Steps up production. Every time Allen and Benny lay an egg, my hens try to match it. <laughs> and that really increases your egg production? Yep, indeed, up to last Sunday. What happened last Sunday? All my hens killed themselves straining. Well, so long, Bob. <laughs> trouble just like city folk. Here's a new house built at the end of the alley. I wonder who lives there. I beg your pardon, sir. Well, that's quite all right, old man. Go around to the back and I'll give you something to eat. (laughs) Fred, it certainly is a surprise finding you here. Yeah. (laughs) Look, Jack, you you can cut out the imitation. Stop holding your nose. I'm here now. I know. That's why I'm holding it. I got the first one in, anyway. You know, you look better with the clothespin on. <laughs> why, you... Why, you ghoul, if you were 30 years younger, I'd punch you right in the eye. What? You'd hit a kid of seven? <laughs> now, listen, Benny. When you were seven, Sarah Bernhardt broke the attendance record at the Roxy. <laughs> She didn't have Rochester with her either. Now, tell me, what are you doing down here in Allen's Alley? Well, if you want to know, I'm conducting a poll. What are you doing here? Jack, if I told you why I'm here, the real, honest-to-goodness truth, cross my heart and hope to look like Jessel, the real truth, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it. Yes, I would. Why did you come? To louse up your program. <laughs> You're lousing up your own program. Isn't that enough? Now, wait a minute, Jack. Let's not argue. After all, this is your last program of the season. You're going off the air. Yeah, I guess you're right. I go off the air every year at this time. My sponsor thinks I should have a vacation. Well, confidentially, Jack, that isn't the real reason. Your sponsor knows that your material won't keep in the summer. (laughs) Even printing the scripts on dry ice won't do it. (laughs) You and oysters get a little gamey with the hot weather. (laughs) Well, I remember a broadcast you did that was so bad it corroded the 6th Avenue L. Not only that... Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, Benny. I have a surprise for you. I have some friends of yours yours visiting me. Can't even read. (laughs) Well, you all, you're so cheap, I didn't think you hired more than one person at a time. I didn't... (laughs) Floral in the script here. <laughs> but we've been here at Allen's Alley long enough. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, since this is our last program of the season, I'd like to present a young comedian who's going to take my place this summer. I first met this young man two and a half years ago in the South Pacific. He was in uniform, entertaining his fellow G.I.s, and I thought he was great. The next time I saw him was after the war. We had lunch together, and I knew he had a sense of humor, because when I paid the check, 
He laughed as I put my hand into his pocket. <laughs> and here he is, Jack Parr. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jack. You're welcome. And Jack, I want you to know that after we had lunch that day, I realized that you had a certain talent that wasn't to be ignored. So I went to my sponsor and asked him to give you the summer job. Well, Jack, I felt the same way about you. You did? Yes, I, I too noticed that you had a certain talent. So I went to my tailor and had him sew up my pockets, you see. <laughs> well, that's pretty crazy, Jack. But look, this isn't television. If we keep calling each other Jack, people will get confused. So I'll call you Jack, and you can call me. I can tell him what to call you. <laughs> I'd give a million dollars if we weren't on the air, right? Brad. <laughs> Don't listen to him, Jack. Just call me Mr. Benny. All right, Mr. Benny. Uh, isn't that Fred Allen? Yes. I listen to his program every Sunday. Well, don't apologize. That happens to a lot of people. <laughs> they listen to me and forget to turn the radio off after I'm through, is he? Well, how can they? They're asleep. <laughs> they are not. Now, there is a clever ad lib for you. <laughs> they, they are not. That shows what happens when you catch Mr. Benny with his writers down. <laughs> Mr. Allen, did you say writer? Uh, certainly. You mean that when Mr. Benny's on the radio, he doesn't just make that stuff up? Make that stuff up? Jack, listen, son. Last year, for two weeks, Benny slept in the lobby of the Sherry Netherlands Hotel. He couldn't ad-lib, I'd like a room, please. <laughs> what are you talking about? I ad-libbed that once, and it cost me $12 a day. <laughs> so go be clever. Now, look, Par, do you have any plans about what you're going to do starting next week when you take over my show? Well, I don't know too much, Jack, but I just made sure that I have a very funny script and I'm going to get a lot of laughs. Laughs? Uh, what kind of laughs? Big laughs. Big laughs? Fred. Yeah? <laughs> Come here a minute. Yeah, you mean that there was... <laughs> well, I, I think you're right, Jack. Look, uh, look, kid... Have you ever tried any dramatic stuff? <laughs> dramatic? Gee, I, I don't know. I haven't even thought about doing anything serious. Mm -hmm. What I had in mind was to come out with a fast opening and say, How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Jack Parr. Uh -huh. A funny thing happened to me on the way to the studio today. I crossed the street against the light and stepped right in front of a taxi cab. Wait, weren't you afraid the cab would hit you? Of course not. Everybody knows a cab is yellow. <laughs> oh, Parr, you may not have a meter on you. You may not have a meter on you, but you're sure ticking tonight. No, no, Par, no. Those are the kind of jokes Phil Harris uses. See, that won't... You see, that won't get you anywhere. Well, how come I got him two shows? Because... <laughs> he doesn't want to be thin like Mary. See? Now, it's no use, Fred. Instead of fooling around here, let's really try and help Jack Parr get started on his new career. Well, I guess you're right, Jack. And I don't mind helping a new comedian. After all, I can't live forever. <laughs> what about me? You already have. Fred, if you're going to give the kid advice, give it to him, will you please? Uh, very well. Now, first of all, Jack, radio is a very good Call business... Call him son. They're getting a son. Up in there. I get it. The uh, uh, radio is a very uh, good business if you're... I'm start starting to sound like Rochester here. <laughs> radio is a very good business, uh, son, and you're getting into it at the right time. Because nowadays, if you make good in radio, you go to television. If you're slipping, you go to the Roxy. <laughs> Yes, for two weeks. And, kid, the next bit of advice I want to give you is the most important of all. Now, one of the worst things that can happen to a radio comedian is to have his program faded off the air. <laughs> Mr. Allen, you were, you were cut off the air a few weeks ago, weren't you? Me cut off the air? Yes, for 25 seconds. Oh, no, no, no. People misunderstood. You see, I've been in radio for 15 years. And to show its appreciation, NBC, that big-hearted organization, gave me those 25 seconds as a vacation. <laughs> with, uh, with pay, of course. I had a wonderful time. I hiked to the water cooler, built a campfire in a Dixie cup, Roasted an old script and popped all the corn. Gad, what a tan I had when I got back. <laughs> that is what Mr. Benny told me. Well, what did Mr. Benny tell you? Well, he said the NBC has a man sitting at Master Controls, and yes. his job is to see that the right person comes on at the right time. 
And when you got a laugh, the control man was so startled, he thought he had the wrong program and pulled the switch. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Well, I've uh, got to run along now, fellas. Thanks very much for your advice, and I'll try my best to forget it. Yes, yes, do that. And before you leave, Jack Parr, I want to wish you a lot of luck on your summer show, and I hope that you'll be a great success. Thank you very much. And Jack, if at any time you feel that you need some more help and you can't get me at home, you see, you can buy an album of my records, which are now on sale at your local music store. You see? You'll, uh, you'll also find them in the bagel slot at the Automat. <laughs> So long, Jack. So long. Say, Fred. Yeah? Fred, uh, I yeah. think this kid, Jack Parr, is going to be all right. But, gee, I... Jack, I wonder... Jack, Jack, stop worrying. How can he hurt us on the radio? What do you mean? What has he got to make jokes about? He's young, has plenty of his own hair, doesn't wear bifocals. That's right. And he hasn't got wrinkles in his face no. or bags under his eyes. <laughs> he doesn't talk through his nose or play the violin. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't got a thing to worry no. about. Come on, Fred. I'll take you over to the water cooler and buy you a drink. Huh? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Fred Allen for lousing up my show, and I'll try my best to do the same thing for him next week. Since our last broadcast of the season, we'll be back again in the fall. Of course, we're still at the Roxy Theater. Thanks for listening to us all season, and I know you'll enjoy Jack Parr very much during the summer. Thanks again, and good night. This is NBC. The National Broadcast.